All right, we're gonna try this again. I'm starting it up. No. Mm -hmm. I think we are live now. Finally. Wow, it finally works. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Zilla, we're going to start some music up here. Alright, let me know when you start the music. I'm tweeting out. Right. You've waited all week for this. And we are back by popular demand. Horseplay is back online. Welcome back to Horseplay. Hey guys, what's going on? Right here, Obi-Wan X2. Right. Let me get make sure my pointers are that way. Bam! That way. Yogi Zilla, right here in the house. Welcome back this week, episode 13, the 13th floor and sacred stones. I was saying that a couple times, and Yogi's like, uh, yeah, you just, I said it scared stones for real, like the first time I did it. I almost went with that name as a play on words, but I didn't want to mess you up. By the way, that's a very good uh, Michael you, Bay epic opening. You did. I really Abrams. appreciate that. Yeah, I was thinking of something new, and I got some rock in the background, kind of going and everything. <laughs> Everybody's been waiting for us all week long. There's people that is just they just stopped functioning because they're waiting for us. Exactly. They're like, Where's hey, horseplay? Come exactly. on. Exactly. That's how we do it. You know, we want. You know, everybody. Everybody loves us. I love us too. I love me. All the time. <laughs> Sorry. No, <laughs> just it was it was just like last week when you were you know sucking out your your cigarette for the house. Welcome, geeks, gamers, to horse play. <laughs> Today is March thirteenth, two thousand fourteen. This is episode thirteen again, titled "The Thirteenth Floor and the Sacred Stones." In this show, we'll be we'll be dabbling, kind of Freemason here. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the conspiracy theories and the supernatural things and the magic number, of course being 13 uh, as everybody says uh, we'll also be uh, interacting more with our listeners um, I kind of messed it up because I actually called him on the wrong Skype um, but we're, we want to re we're gonna be reacting with uh, the the whole chat I gotta turn the music off now it's been going for a long time uh, but the whole chat and we're actually gonna be getting into just you know what you guys want to talk about make sure that we can actually you know get with you guys and just you know, hey, what do you guys think about it? Um, in the future, next week, I promise I will not screw this up. We will get on there so you guys can actually call in right here on the show um, so that you guys can talk with us. I mean, we just because you're not, you know, in the picture, we guys still want you guys in the show. Um, and a couple of new things has happened this week. And before we do anything, I got to get it out there. Yogi, I know I'm skipping all around, but I can't, I don't, I can't even find where you wrote it, but I got to get out there. Everybody's been asking us for the last couple weeks, hey, uh, we really want you guys on iTunes. Well, we really want you guys on iTunes. We want you guys on iTunes. Well, what you guys don't realize is we've been trying to get on iTunes for since we started Horseplay, <laughs> really. And it was funny because... There was a couple of new friends that we met over at uh, the allgames.com, and they said, uh, we really want you guys on horseplay. And then all of a sudden, like the next day, literally, Yogi gets a text and says, uh, hey, dude, we're on horseplay. We're on, uh, we're on iTunes now. I thought we couldn't even get a hold of them. So, yes, guys, we are on iTunes. You can download our shows so that you guys can have them all the time. Maybe we'll download them and make, make, a, make a pack. 
you know, like the season packs that they have of of, uh, of uh, TV shows and stuff. <laughs> it'll be it'll be the spring season of horseplay with Obi Wan X two and Yogi Zilla. Yeah, or Yogi Zilla and Obi Wan X two. I'm not opposed to that either. But as you guys can see, though, we are we are loving it over on the top right hand corner of the or excuse me, top left hand corner, way up there above Yogi's head. We have our network. This is our baby. Actually, it's actually Yogi's baby. I'm just kind of tagging along, um, and and I'm I'm not afraid to say this to anybody. Yogi is doing a immense amount of work for all this to happen, and I'm grateful for myself. So Yogi, thank you very much. But you guys got to check that out at geekyantics.wordpress.com. Now you guys do see right above my head voicemail. What the heck is voicemail? I don't know. Well, voicemail is actually when you call somebody and you have to leave a message for them. You can do that for us, too. Right there, 206-415-4987. Leave us a message. You guys are going to hear a couple. I didn't think he was going to play it on the show, but I really can't stop him. Um, so he's going to play my message. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't judge. That's all I can say. Don't judge, please. <laughs> Throughout the show, you guys can tweet us on uh, right here, Obi1X at Obi1X2, over there at YogiZilla. Um, and uh, make sure you guys uh, check out the uh, our, our pages as well, YouTube page. And, um, of course, Yogi is actually uh, co-streaming right now on his page, which is at uh, twitch.tv forward slash YogiZilla. And, up, um, and don't forget to uh, check out Yogi's uh, actual blogs as well at uh, yomar.me and dualpassionline.wordpress.com. Whew, that was almost a tongue twister. And don't forget, if you do guys want to play Arma 2, sorry, I got to do it. You guys want to play Arma 2 with me? That's one of the only games I am playing right now, right down there, 21st Regiment. Go hook us up. We'll, we'll get you guys to playing right. But anyway, let's get on with the show. I can't. I gotta say, it, Yogi. Yeah, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, we were talking about that earlier. We're like, yeah, you you can just leave it up there. You don't have to say anything about it every. I can't, man. That's my clan. You know, that's 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 my guys. I I can't. Sorry, Yogi. Hate me later. <laughs> it's all right. I, I've had to hold back myself a lot because I have a clan that I've been running since like the you know nineties. Plug it. And then, you know, nipples of fate. And people are like, our websites, anytime we, we do anything on the, online, we get tons of hits because people think it's it's a porn site. It's like, Nipples of Fate? Ooh, that sounds kind of good. It's like, nope, it had nothing to do with porn. <laughs> well, even though we're not in the porn industry, we're actually in the talk show industry. Um, but you guys do, and we're not just on iTunes. I, for, I was going to forget all about it. We're on Stitcher, Talk Shoe. Um and we're on a couple more actually and I don't have them in front of me and so y Yogi's probably going to tell you what other ones we're on <laughs> but stay tuned um, this is every night wow every night we're bleh, tired every night how's that we are on live every Thursday night starting at 11 like tonight we started a little bit late but you guys got to kind of hear this little bit of the pregame show on both Twitch channels right here Obi-Wan-X2 and Yogi Zilla. What do you think, Yog? That's it. I think it's, anybody that think it's good. I, I'm, I'm chatting. <laughs> Someone's already so we're he, already getting trolled. They're like, "Are you guys on Porno Hub?" <laughs> no, we're not a Porno Hub. I promise. I don't think. As That's far as I so, yeah, it's the one network we're not gonna go on. <laughs> as far as I know, we're not. If he's kind of doing the thing in the background. I don't know nothing about it. If you could send me some videos, I will review those and get you those information back as soon as possible. Yes, my uh, my my <laughs> porn my porn actor name is uh, Jose Jalapeno. Jalapeno. And a steak. <laughs> Would you like to touch my steak? <laughs> but it, oh my god! Oh my god! What's up? Well, I do want to say right off. Proof <laughs> you, Drew. What we do want to say right off the bat, we do have a, a couple of followers right in Twitch chat, so we'll holler out the little shout outs to you guys. T Curtis Jr., what's going on, man? Thanks for uh for uh coming out. Dark Reaper XX1, uh, Mr. Jed 2000 hi, what's going on? OP noob, I am. I can't help it, I was born that way. Um, 
who else do we got here? And um, of course, Yogi Zilla and myself are on there. Uh, thanks for uh, hanging out with us, guys. But we're going to get right uh, into some more shout outs that uh, Yogi is going to just, you know, we got some people that we want to make sure that we say thank you to. Hey, Yogi? Yes, yeah, so lots of, we've got lots of love from uh, Chip Sella and gang over at the B Team podcast, uh, Fred Rojas, um, Ryan Coles, aka Warren. Oh gosh, so many people. Uh, Neo Jake, uh, Jake uh, McClenahan, cool guy. He does some music too, by the way. So check out his stuff. He has some stuff up on YouTube. He does a lot of like beats and stuff. So like, if you want some custom music, like intros and stuff, he could probably hook you up. Um, who else? Who else? James Fortengard, who left us like an eight-minute long voicemail. So I don't think we'll be able to play that. He he actually read a story. For us, I told him we're going to talk about loosely about scary stuff tonight. Mm -hmm. Like uh, that's kind of the idea, and he started reading a horror, uh, like a, a horror story, and left it in the voice. I'm like, oof, that's kind of long, dude. It's cool. <laughs> but yeah, this is this tons of people. So too many to name. You know, Sean Freeman over at uh, Zombie Cast, Knuckleballer Radio, Normie. Don't forget my man. Uh, Don't forget him. No, Matt, Matt, Bra Matt Bradford, of course, the king of derails. Was it? At, it's at it's at it's at Moto, right? At at Matt, yeah, you said that on purpose this time. Matto at Matto McFly on Twitter. You know, everybody. If we missed anybody, you know who you are. We still love you. If we didn't say your name, promise. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and for some reason, <laughs> some reason Twitch is being like temperamental tonight for me. I don't know. I'm having issues. I'm having first world problems. Dude, <laughs> oh, that's... we just had another person join Winter Winter Live in the chat. We got, like, we got a lot of a lot of activity going on tonight. Ninety nine problems and ninety eight of them are me. <laughs> so he doesn't have much. I, well, I was scared. I was scared I was gonna be like he's trying to bait us and then sing like a Jay Z song. So I was like, I don't know if I should acknowledge that. Is... I got ninety nine problems and the bitch ain't one. It, it, isn't Jay Z the one that was uh, having fun with all the little girls? No, I think that's R. Kelly. Oh, I think you're confusing your black, oh. your black. Dude, that's not even. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm really glad that my, my my speakers went out for like two seconds, literally, because then I still know what you said. That's the thing. That's not even nice. <laughs> that's like me calling you a Mexican. That's yeah, not nice, I, is it? I, I told you that rolls off my back. I'm used to it now. Come. Yeah, look, look, Yogi, look. you're no fun to mess with. <laughs> you got some. You got some love. They, people like your hat. What hat? Oh, the '88. Is that what you guys are saying? <laughs> I don't even. You forgot, you forgot about your hat, <laughs> I, dude. I was just. I have. I was gonna wear a different hat today, and I didn't even. Yeah, whatever. We're having some issues in a different area of my life, and it, yeah, my hat was not my concern. I apologize, everybody. <laughs> Why does it... Uh, because basically... We're going to go over this again. Why does it say we're playing League of Legends? Um, <laughs> it's the only thing that I know that... Because I do play League of Legends. It's the only thing that I can put because we've kept it on League of Legends every time. If they would make a talk show channel for streams, I would be in that. Um, <laughs> I do apologize. I, I'm i not playing League of Legends right well, now. Well, uh, I think I do also when we... Yeah, I think also we put it in there because those like we tend to put the games that we're playing currently or that we're most popular with us right now. Mm -hmm. That's like a little hook because eventually we'll talk about League of Legends or we'll talk about whatever else we play. Like I, I, this week, I put Daisy because I was playing that a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, League of Legends is kind of like our roots. We got started with the MOBA. That's it. We've talked many uh, an hour of about MOBAs and especially yeah. League of Legends. <laughs> but yeah, no. But we you love it. I do. But anyway, but I, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be you know false advertising or nothing. But I like League of Legends as much as I like playing my you know with my unit in Arma too. So, but um, but I used to play WoW and I don't play that at all anymore. So, to some people uh, it's a disappointment. To some people it's they're actually happy I don't play anymore because I was quite the dickhead. Sorry. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. 
Yogi, are we moving on? Are, are no? we moving? I guess yeah, so. you were doing shout outs. <laughs> no, I think it's all the shout outs for now. Uh, we, I mean, we just have Boss Dude 6 just tell us that he's a huge fan. He watches this all the time. I don't know if he's being facetious, but thank you for that. Appreciate <laughs> I can't that, ever man. tell in chat when people, I can never tell when people are trying to bait us. Well, you That's know what? Fun. You know what? There's always going to be people that come in here. Like, like I've seen him before. I believe it's if it's the same guy, but um, I've seen that sort of that name, so I've, I kind of recognize him a little bit. But like, you know, like T. Curtis, of course, he's a mod. I've seen Dark Reaper before. So I mean, these people that come in and they even if they're trolling us, we're just having fun. That's all we're doing. Dark, if we can't have Dark fun, Reaper then why are we doing? Hard, this? Dark Reaper likes to give us a hard time. We're getting some tweets in, too, man. It's busy tonight. Heart, yeah, I'm getting tweets, too, like crazy. And, all right, so we got a question right off the bat and while we're doing our introductory section. We'll just ask real quick. I don't know if he's being serious, but Winter Live asks, can you teach me how not to feed? Now, you know, whether it's serious or not, I know a lot of people have this question when they talk about MOBAs, mm -hmm. and I think it's a universal truth in all um, MOBAs <laughs> that what you want to do if you don't want to feed that much is get your mindset. For me, what works is get your mindset off of getting lots of kills. That's the number one thing because the first thing people do is when they jump into a MOBA is they get really aggressive, really antsy, you know, because they come off of the background of playing, like, shooters. You know, you play an FPS game, you know, the main performance indicator in those games is, is uh, you know, kill-death ratio. That's pretty much it. There's no other thing. Nothing else really matters. So people go into the game, they're like, I want to get lots of kills, and that's it. And then they start overextending, you know, they start attack attacking the champions near their, t their turrets or their towers. You know, that applies in Dota 2, Smite, LoL, Guardians of Middle-Earth. Mm -hmm. Any mobile you play... It, 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 you're gonna run into that so I say get your mind off of the kill death ratio and just be patient think about positioning be very aware of your surroundings pay attention to uh, all the blips if you see people missing don't wait for someone to call it oh be aware of your of your map if you see that you know two other lanes or another lane is gonna be pushed hard and I'm, and, uh, and the, the, the enemies there are missing more than likely they're gonna they're gonna gank you you know just be aware mm -hmm. for that if you overextend if you're extended really far in the lane and you have no support, chances are you're going to be ganked very soon. So, you know, don't stay somewhere too long. Make your moves, make them fast. And if you miss an opportunity, don't try to force it. That's, I think that's the general thing I can say to people that feed a lot. Is just don't be so aggressive. I mean, it's good to be apply pressure, but it, it doesn't mean just be sloppy either. You know, the, the, it's, it's kind of like a psychological game. You got to get make yourself appealing to the person to make them want to attack you. But don't make yourself an easy kill either. It's, you know, you want to make wear them out and, and make it seem like you messed up. But then be aware of like every move you make is deliberate. You know, it's like oh, mm -hmm. oh, he overextended. I'm gonna get him, but it's actually a trap. You know, make sure you set the 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 the, the uh, conditions of the engagement. You know, I, I think that's the biggest thing. Once you learn that, every mobile is pretty easy to dissect. When you learn the pacing of the game. You know, where they're, you know, every every MOBA has like a laning phase and then they have a phase where you like start floating around and ganking. And then, you know, that's that's pretty much the progression of every MOBA. You know, there's two main phases. <laughs> Winter Life says that Dark feeds, Dark Reaper feeds a lot. <laughs> right. Well, and, and like what Yogi was they saying. They don't even know each other supposedly. Um, you know, this chat's crazy. They got to get in here. Yeah, it is. I, I like it. I love it. Um, but when you when you're. You know, even what lane you're in, um, even if you're a support, uh, there's the times to where when you start playing more and more and more, you and you play the same champion. So if you like support and you're playing Thresh and you're playing Leona and you're playing, say, Annie, those are your three supports that you want to play. Uh, so you're going to know exactly what at level 2 or level 6 or level 7 where your power spikes are going to come from, uh, what, what piece of gear they're going to come from, what you know, what you can do and what you can't do. Um, you know, if you're playing Thresh, you can throw a, a, a chain to grab somebody, and if they're running away, if they're still at the end by a little bit, that hook will actually reach out and get them. I've done it before, it's and it made kills. Um, so, I mean, there's just little things that you, if you play more and play more, that you'll, you'll actually get better and figure out, like if you're an ADC, you know how much your damage is doing at each level. You know what you can do to, like, you know, last hit minions, or just to get that last little bit of a shot on another character, you know, with trades and whatnot. So you just got to be smart, basically, like the Yogi was saying. <laughs> I support Heimerdinger. I will play with you any day. I main Lucian in ADC. See, Heimerdinger, I'm going to say this. He, The way they, they changed him recently, I mean, not, it's not that recent now, but 
his last change, they made him really powerful early game, where before he was more of an end game character. Like level 15, he but, falls off. Bad. Yeah, he, he falls off now. Like, he's really annoying early on because he's got so much defensive ability, so many defensive abilities, and that burst damage is nasty. You don't want to get caught out by yourself next to his turrets, his traps, when you're the only target he has to focus on. But if he gets ganked and you have your creeps with you... See, again, it goes back to the positioning. Stick with your creeps, stick with your teammates. You know, if mm-hmm. you if you keep numbers on your side and map awareness on your side, you usually will come out out of sticky situations or win, out of, win on battles. But anyway, we'll probably talk more League of Legends. It's inevitable. That's, that's one of our main games that oh, yeah. we always show love to. Well, we're going to play that regardless just because we love it anyway, so... Word. So Word while tier. Obi's distracted what? there, I am distracted. We're done, we're, we're done with the shout outs, but you know, don't forget to uh, tweet us at uh, Obi One X Two and uh, Yogizilla, and also uh, at Geeky Antics, Geeky Antics. The Geekster. And, uh, the Geekster. <laughs> don't confuse people now. They're gonna think that's not actually a thing. That's part. That's probably a thing, but not our thing. Geeky Antics uh, on Twitter. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm just a terrible host. Her co-host, or I think you're the main guy anyway in this this operation. <laughs> Will you stop it? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we're, we're, the chat is like off the chain tonight. I know it's, I'm getting tweets like so crazy too. I love it, man. It's awesome. You gotta join us live for the full experience. You know, horse play live. You gotta go on Twitch. You know, uh, Ob One X Two Twitch channel. Mm-hmm. I also simulcast on, on my channel, Yogizilla. You know, and also we'll be posting a lot more information on how to connect with us, how to get involved, how to participate, how to contribute, how to, you know, whatever, collaborate, if you want to. That's the easiest way to say it. Just go to the Geeky Antics Network global site at uh, geekyantics.wordpress.com. And we're probably going to get an official .com soon enough. You know, we're just trying to build up everything little by little. We don't want to go in, get in over our heads. Definitely. But on that site, we share a lot of our favorite uh, podcasts and blog posts. Um, we have some exclusive content coming, um, uh, like some new shows and stuff that we're working on. Um, we actually got a few hosts that are interested in doing some new stuff. I mean, we got a lot of stuff in the pipelines coming up soon enough. But also, neat, the latest and greatest, again, our voicemail hotline, and also for facts, if you want to send us a fax, which would be weird. Yeah, it's on, it's on the overlay if you're watching the video on YouTube or Twitch. It's uh, 206 415 uh, 4987 206-415-4987 and uh, yeah we will we will play and respond to your messages live on the show and we're gonna do we'll do it for the first time on this show more ways to connect with us so don't be shy show us some love and yeah and by the way again and much yeah. love to uh, <laughs> much love to uh, Tim Curtis he's been uh, pimping out our show on uh, all the Twitter accounts he manages on all games and uh, in the uh, chat on IRC as well. Uh... <laughs> no, I'm not. It's a. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you really well, and... serious? They're taught, man. Want... Keep, keep going. They're, yeah, they're trying to I saw, throw us yeah, off I saw, track. I saw that. I saw that. We're just smoking east like, You know, we're, we're trying not to stink up the house. That so hurts this is my our, feelings. This is a way for us to to keep level headed, and and and, and also. At the same time, caffeinated, I guess. Uh, upped, upped, n- nicotine, whatever you... Nicotinated. Nicotinated. <laughs> that's a dude. That's hard. <laughs> nicotinated. Ladies and gentlemen, down. we are now nicotinated. We are nicotinated. There you go. But uh, so I just want to say this. Mr. Jed2000 just said that he mains Urgot on League of, League of Legends. Oh, Mad props. Dude, I Urgot, will... Urgot, I think, is very underrated. <sighs> Dude, okay, I don't care. If you guys are in League of Legends NA, I'm putting my my, my name in here. Uh, that's my... Uh, it's actually the same as my name. Uh, that is my summoner name. If you play Ergot and you main Ergot, I will support for you all the way up to freaking Platinum or whatever the freaking highest is. I tell you what, Ergot or Ergot... Ergot is Ur-Got so overpowered, man. Is- as yeah, the only thing that's bad about him is that he's slow and he's got a really short range. It, no but one... once he gets a lock on you, no, 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 his main shot it has a short range. But once you get the the lock on the person with the ooze, and then you can shoot the homie missiles on them, that's fine. But if you get someone that has really good CC and combining with Rugat, oh man, 
Well, you guys. If, if you can't run away from it, if you get slowed what are my with your guy, oh man. What are my three main support champs that I play? Thresh, Annie, and. No, well, we Leona? I can't. I can't tell. You. We haven't played in a while, bro. Oh you come on, man! Me in a long time. That's because you makes me sad. No, no, don't say it's my fault. Nope, nope. I'm a text or phone call away. No, Stop. no, uh, no, 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 no. No matter what I'm in the middle of, you know, all you gotta do is just hit me up, and I'll and I could more than likely will drop it for a quick game of League of Legends, which is never quick because you know. They're usually 30-minute matches, 40-minute matches, and you never want to just play one. It's like a Pringle. You can't just have just one. I know everybody just heard this. Now, for those that are just listening on the podcast, he just dissed me. He just dissed me that really bad, and nobody caught it, so I'm going to make sure everybody I'm knows. Dissing. I'm just saying I'm not feeling the love. You, you've replaced me. We're supposed to get a horse play team started on for casual rank play. You know, and you said, oh, I got a team already. Oh, oh yeah, I, I play in my clan on Armor 2 and League of Legends. Oh, okay, I see how it is. Well, that doesn't that doesn't happen anymore. So, yes, okay, I will. Damn it. <laughs> um, as soon as things slow down, like I said to you last week, as soon as everything slows down and my extra stuff that I'm doing outside of the computer world or the Internet, uh, as soon as all that slows down, man, we will definitely do that because I want to actually – start up a couple different games you know to where we can play together and especially more games with our with the the fans of horse play and fans of us uh so we can actually play together ow let's go back to the show because we've done derailed ourselves that and we're Twi we're gonna Twitters, tweets tweets we yes we're gonna tweet it now guys all right anybody on here and it, it, you got friends on twitter tell them to retweet it we are going to hashtag what is it? Nick Nickelated? <laughs> Nickinated. Nickinated. We are gonna hashtag hashtag Nickinated. I'm gonna start it right now. Okay. And, and serious, I'm gonna put it off. You guys aren't following me. Follow me right now. I'm gonna probably not okay. even spell it right. It's, wow, it's already up there. Really? <laughs> are you serious? No, it's not. All right. Since I can't spell because I'm half never mind i'm gonna get you in trouble for this stuff no i'm just gonna get in trouble for the stuff that i would say right now so i'm not even gonna do it okay hashtag nickinated right there i've sent it you guys like it post it tweet it retweet it we'll see how far we get with it <laughs> i probably didn't even do it right either it's just like a just i just tweeted that's it hashtag nickinated that's it I just so, didn't see it. so anybody knows anybody that sees our Twitter, she oh oh my god! Anybody that sees our Twitter is gonna be like hashtag <laughs> Nickinated. What the heck is this? Oh, it's a marketing plug. We're gonna get them curious enough to check it out. <laughs> hashtag Nickinated. Get your Nickinade on at horseplay. <laughs> Nickinade is gonna be our future product. It'll be liquid nicotine. Liquid That'll nicotine. That'll probably be nasty as hell. <laughs> uh, so I have to say. It's right here. <laughs> I've swallowed some of this oil. Yeah, but I, have disgusting. you ever swallowed some of this oil? Ugh, it's bad. Actually, mine was really tasty because I have the menthol. And, like, like, I had some come on my lip. And I had, like, menthol on my mouth the whole day. I was like, oh, it's delicious. Every time I was breathing, it was menthol. <laughs> All right. Winter, well, Winter yeah. Life says we, we should stop streaming right now and carry him. I know, League of Legends. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'll get right on that. Um, I don't green screen because um, when me and me and Yogi are talking, we're actually on Skype together as well. So we like to see each other's, you know, facial expressions and stuff. And I can't green screen off of Skype properly. It just doesn't work for some reason. So that's what, hence why it's green. I'm thinking about just putting a, a sign back there for why I'm streaming just to have it up. But anyway, it's good. Not a big deal. We'll try to get it working here soon. Man crushes and geek girls. The segment for today, I'm still trying to look for it in the show notes, so I'm just kind of reading slow. You know, that oh, kind okay, of floor. so I'll just say, you know, yeah, <laughs> no, we, don't, we don't, obviously don't have a guest today, but if you want it to be a guest or, or you want to suggest one of your favorite man crushes or geek girls, again, contact us on Twitter or the official gang site geekyantics.wordpress.com uh, all on the video so you can check that out there 
And we love to have you. We love we love having guests. And again, Obi, uh, as Obi said, he <laughs> he forgot to to sign into the new uh, Horseplay Live account so we can have some call-ins and be properly set up for it. Sorry, but uh, that's all right. Sorry. But next next show. Next sure. week. Next you week. Still, you still you can still interact with us on the chat and the Twitter chat and uh, and Twitch. Next week we will log in to the the uh, the other Skype to where you guys can call in. Uh, definitely, because we do want to hear you guys. We do want to want you guys to be engaged with us. Just because it's, you know, sometimes it's, I want to hear somebody else's voice besides that guy. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just, and uh, you know, probably vice versa. Hey. He's probably pointing. <laughs> he just seen it. He's probably over here, too. I don't want to hear this guy's voice anyway. But anyway, back to it. We're getting so off track today. It's not even funny. Because we're both like watching Twitter repeatedly, watching the, you know, oh man, what are we doing? Don't even know. So we're gonna get right into it. Obligatory news. This is the news that we think is obligatory. That was a good one, right? <laughs> you know I mean? It's for the news that we think is obligatory. Yeah, just we're, say the. the we're, I'd do. Say the name twice and just make sure that I say it in the beginning and in the end. <laughs> it's like uh. Well, like that whole meme, uh, you know, bad game is bad. <laughs> yeah, bad game is bad. Man. So what's going on in the news? This uh, We talked about, um, if anybody heard about it, the uh, Jeopardy douchebag is what we call him, Andrew Chu. Uh, this week's dick of the week. <laughs> it's, I like that, man. It's yeah, Ken... yeah last, last, last week's dick of the week was Andrew Chu. Mm -hmm. This week. Which one is this week? Ken Levine. Or Levine. Yeah. Is, did I say it right? Levine? Levine? It's, you had it right the first time. Ken Levine. Go with your gut. Who we learned a few weeks back is devolving, dissolving. Wait, I'm, I'm lost. I My stuff's, read that. It just went out my, for some reason. It? Yeah. Oh, is it? Away. Yeah, there's some weird, there's some, some weird things going on with the interweb today. Wow. All right, so yeah, that, so Ken Levine, he's he's the dick of the week because I mean this have this actually this news broke a while ago, but it's still kind of buzzing about because uh, he's dissol he's dissolving Irrational Games, and these are the guys that produced uh, Bioshock Infinite. Now I'll get, we'll come back, to, we'll circle back to that, but Ken says that it's not about the money, so we know it is. Because anytime they say it's not about the money, it always is. He, but supposedly he wants to join a smaller team. Now, what I think and a lot of people are thinking is that um, it, it's a big part of it is because of Bioshock Infinite. Uh, supposedly they invested two hundred million in, in the production of it, mm -hmm. and that's like a big movie budget, pretty much. You know, and it, it even though it's critically acclaimed and sold over four million units, you know, two uh, K expected more. Uh, more sales. They expect a lot more from it uh, to to offset that 200 million investment. So I'm thinking they're just downsizing the game an option. Well, we'll either fire you and everybody else, or you dissolve your division, your your team, your studio, and then we'll make, uh, reassign it to an, a smaller studio, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> which which is really not bad because he kind of gets a start over, I guess. But it's kind of a dick move that he's just giving in. Yeah. You and Chat Twitter are just blowing that shit up today, aren't you? You yeah, guys, that, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Blow his shit up. Well, right now they're talking. Uh, some people are like really like uh, for me at the mouth talking about uh, League of Legends. Someone wants to share some Urgot tips. So, yeah, maybe we want, if we get to the free balling section this time, our right, Geeks Engaged will open up the lines to just talk about whatever. Definitely. Everybody has in mind. Uh, <laughs> and and of course people are are, uh, are trolling respect, each other in the man. chat. Someone's like, you know, they're doing they're keeping the League of Legends spirit going, so they're like reported. You know, <laughs> that's a big thing you hear on a League of Legends a lot. It's like reported. Yeah, guys, we lose. Uh, I'm gonna go AFK for a few minutes. Mid or feed. Just saying. Oh my god. So yeah, let's go keep going with the news. But yeah, real dick move for for Ken. Um, you know. These are people that are losing their livelihood on a whim, basically. Um, and I don't know. 
I, I'm I, I'm sad about it because I, as someone that actually loves the Bioshock series, I feel like they're never gonna come back to their former glory. I think like, I think that's, that's it for it. Um, and I like all three of the games that have come out to date: uh, Bioshock One, Bioshock Two, and Bioshock Infinite. I, th- I think that each game was great for its own mm-hmm. reasons. But uh, oh well. And I, I never got into Bioshock. I started to, and I was like, "And eh, do I want to buy? It's only a couple bucks for the first one." And then I find out it's like three or four more left. I'm like, no, I'm not buying it. Not going to happen. Because then i got to start a whole new one. Reported for AFK. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going AFK. <laughs> Peace. The, the chat. All right, well, you keep looking at the chat. I'll I am. You keep going news. I'll We'll kind of, you know, alternate. So yeah, uh, D- DC Nate over at uh, All Games Chat uh, shared a very interesting link, um, and it's at e- it's a oh it's a over at edx.org. I'm not gonna screen share anything, or Obi's not gonna get share it. But uh, if you want to look it up, go to edx.org. We're not getting paid for this or anything, but I thought it was interesting uh, because if you're looking to brush brush up your IT skills or break into the industry for the first time, they have a free Linux course that's like a twenty four hundred dollar value over at edx.org. So that's pretty neat. Just throwing that out there. We get you know, we, we got to cover all the spectrums: the gaming, the entertainment. Another tweet just went through. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm getting blown and, up and too. And the tech so. stuff. It's all good. We like getting blown up. Blow us up. Yeah, but uh, what else? What else do we have? Back to the gaming. Uh, Titanfall dropped this week, and we're probably gonna talk a little, little bit about that. Um, mm-hmm. if we get to open up the the lines to some feedback, see what everybody thinks about that. But uh. It's been critically acclaimed as the killer app for the Xbox One. Um, it's also available on the PC, but you know it's really considered a, like, like the flagship game for the Xbox One. But that's not m- saying much since that's really the only game that's new on there that's re- worth talking about. Uh, you know, and, and, well, at least the only multiplayer game, and that's really what makes the platforms. These single player games really do- usually don't sell systems, as far as I'm concerned. Right. But. Um, so yeah, Titanfall is all the big time. And we're probably, like I said, we'll probably talk about that a little bit. I know people are playing it on the PC and um, what you call it, uh, Xbox One. And also on that note, there, there's rumors that it might be releasing for the Mac as well, which I think is kind of silly, but okay. <laughs> like at least the Mac owners will have something to play. But uh, <laughs> uh, also, here's a, here's a really random one. Shaq Fu. A Legend Reborn. It's the sequel, Shaq Fu. So Shaq Fu is supposedly making a comeback. And this just goes to show that uh, crowdfunding has really opened up the door to some really crazy ideas. Uh, you know, and by the way, shout outs to, to Gaming History 101 for uh, putting us onto this news. Uh, I've been avoiding Kickstarter and stuff like that because there's so many tempting things that, to throw your money behind. And it's like, well, I'm, I'm trying to get into frugal mode right now. Uh, and, and save the money for some future investments for the network and some uh, new upgrades and gaming stuff and whatnot. A lot of stuff in the pipelines there, but you know it's interesting that people are trying. There's this trend of uh, trying to like um, revitalize these games that I don't think anybody has had on their minds for a long time, not even through random bouts of nostalgia. But it's a, it's an interesting concept. Um, they, you know, they also had recently, they had Boogerman and some other, like, random games up. They had General Chaos. Now, General Chaos is, like, an older game. That was a, gen- a, a Genesis game. It was, it was on some other platforms. But, you know, it's 16-bit era. General Chaos would have been a game I would have liked to see come back. Because that was a really fun game, some really unique game mechanics. But, it's, you know, some of these other games are trying to bring back. It's like, why? Leave it alone. <laughs> You got the League of Legends chat. You guys got to come on the, on, on the Twitch chat. Twitch.tv forward slash Obi-Wan-X2. Or just, if you're already in the Twitch ecosystem, just look up Obi-Wan-X2 or, or me, uh, Yogi Zilla, and uh, join the fun. But the main the main, the main, main place to be right now is Obi-Wan-X2. The chat, the chat is going crazy. It is. And I'm saying this to everybody. You guys see it all there. I play all five positions, and I just play one good champion all five positions. The champions that I know how to play. So there you go. I'm saying it, and I know where I'm. Get, I'm actually getting a soft topic this week. This is my turn. Uh, Zach Top, <laughs> um, Elise is my best jungle. I can play a little bit of uh, you know Elise and uh, Gragas. That's my man. The drunk, of course, uh, or Ziggs. 
Um, and then AD carry would be Lucian, or um, I can play some Caitlyn, which is pretty good. And then my support is Thresh the Ona. So there's my guys I will play with anything. So stop with the troll. I'm trying not to troll, okay? <laughs> Who's saying you're trolling? No, I, Dark is telling somebody to stop trolling, and I'm, telling, I'm just trying not to. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Am I still reading the news? Yeah. Are you done with your bit? Your yeah, little I'm, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was tweeting out. I was tweeting out. All right. So to turn next off thing. The track. Sorry. Ah, it's cool, man. I just want to make sure you got the League of Legends out of your system. It's 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 the disease, man. I've been actually trying to convert a few people over to Dota 2 and, and League of Legends, but that, one person, Neil Jake, was like, I I, I can't do it because I know my uh, addictive personality. Bring your see, forehead kinda... to your camera. Why? Trying to pull them out of League of Legends? What's wrong with I'm you? Try, no, I'm trying to convert them to it. Oh, to, to, you're trying to convert from Dota 2. Okay, I thought you said no, no, from League of Legends. I'm like, hey, you want to play? Them. No, 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 I want to convert them over to play League of Legends or Dota 2. I got it you now. Know, either one. Because, you know... I'm so sorry. But Because, you know, the thing I like about the game, about the, both the games, you know, it's like, it's like a TCG, like Hearthstone mm -hmm. or Soul Forge. They're, I think they're like what you could call pick-up-and-play games, you know? Like... Yeah, like they're easy enough to learn, but then you know they always they, it'll take you a lifetime to master them because there's always new things going on mm -hmm. and the meta is constantly changing. But you can play them casually constantly. or you can play them hardcore. You know, like I said, but with MOBA it's a little more intimidating because people feel like there's such a really steep learning curve. Like it's really tough to to really get through the core mechanics and it's really just the mindset of it understanding the, the main tactics and strategy of it but anyway i won't get back on that thing so anyway um more gaming stuff uh obscure and obscure 2 which were uh games uh horror survival type games uh formerly on the original xbox are now on steam both for under ten dollars so if you're looking for some cheap games to play um, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk about Outlast and uh, Slender, all the different games that come out of that whole uh, genre, DayZ. If you like those kind of games along those veins, you may you check it out. Uh, from what I've been told, these are I, I missed these games on the original Xbox, but I've I've seen them and I've heard of them. Um, but it, it, people compare it to like a uh, campy horror movie, kind of like Ill Bleed was on Dreamcast. So you may dig that this game, these games, if you're uh, into that kind of thing. Also, in these remixed versions, they have full controller support, and uh, they've made it more stable for PC um, compatibility purposes and whatnot. And also, they have the third installment, which a lot of people do not like. The fans of the series do not like uh, the third one, which is Final Exam. But uh, it is neat because it has four-player co-op uh, gameplay, so that's worth a look. What I'm most excited about in gaming news, uh, and it's not Titanfall or any of the next-gen stuff, I am excited about... Uh, the Humble Bundle this week. And I know we usually talk about this mm -hmm. uh, under Cheap Bastards, but it, I think it's a big news thing because this is one of the biggest bundles they've done yet. 19 games. 19 Sega games. Oh, Sega? For six bucks. I, look, Sega, I'm a Sega fanboy. You know, the only reason... I would buy every Sega game under the sun if I had more time for gaming. And you guys heard it right here. He is a Sega fanboy. I love Just, Sega. I want to emphasize that word, fan boy. I think I think fan. I think there's two kinds of fanboys. I think there's a fanboy that that is like a brand ambassador and he's a loyalist, but he's open minded enough to try out other things. And then there's the fanboy that's like, if you don't like what he likes, you're you're an asshole. Like I had someone that because I told him that I would never buy a PS4, or PS3. Okay, there's no reason for me to buy those systems. Like, yeah, but look at all the exclusives. And he mentioned all these games, and I'm like, none of those interest me. They're like, you're not a gamer. That's like the bad kind of fanboy. And I thought I thought it was hilarious when someone told me that. Like, oh. like really? I'm not a gamer because I don't want to play those games. Okay. Okay, that's tr okay. <laughs> I got. I hear you there. Then okay, we're good then. But dude, I mean, it's a great bundle. It's got ten classic games. It's got um one of the sleeper hits that uh, I, I think everybody's checked out that I've, I've seen lots of good things about it and I've heard so many good things about it and I'm I think I'm finally going to pull a trigger on it uh, binary domain uh, and it looks amazing from the gameplay videos I've seen and screenshots and everything and everybody has played this is like it's amazing but it's like one of those games that just fell under the radar so I mean that's worth it 
But then uh, also you get Typing of the Dead Overkill, which we've talked about on, on the show before, mm-hmm. which is hilarious, especially if you buy the filthy or, or dirty DLC where it just says the most grotesque, you know, vulgar things you can think of. Oh, it's great. Yeah. And, um, and it has two of the Total War franchise games. I think Shogun and Rome. So, I mean, that's a huge deal. I mean, it even has Alpha Protocol, which isn't a bad game either. So, check it out. You know, 19 games, Humble Bundle Weekly. So, that should be good until next Wednesday, Thursday, the 20th. 19th, 19th to 20th of March 2014 to give you a frame of reference I would jump on that for 6 bucks that Humble Bundle Weekly is one of the first ones in a while that's really attracted me especially since the Steam Holiday CEO. Um that's a, there's so many awesome games there <laughs> someone's like fighting I was like oh no Nintendo's better we won't get into that. <laughs> oh no, we're not doing that. That this shit tonight. Oh no, we had yeah, we've, done that. we've had we've had a long that. fight about this before. Yeah, and I really don't yeah. want to get into that again because I'm gonna lose it because people are gonna tell me why PlayStation's better than uh, this is. We're talking about Nintendo, but yeah, no, we'll it'll get into the PS4 and Xbox yeah. One, and I don't want to talk. And it about it inevitably becomes a, a console war thing. But you know, I will I will say this. Actually, we could um, the reason I one of the reasons I love Sega is because they've always been very risque with the marketing. They've always taken chances on really crazy projects. Some don't work, but some of them are such unique things. It's like you know, they're they're less conservative. They're more like radical. Get out there and just try out new things to get it done. You know, fit, fit, you know, all or nothing. Fit, win or lose, just do it. And I like I like that approach, but also they're very engaged with the community. Like I I've heard a lot of the guys uh, in the Sega team, um, you know, in Sega uh, Japan, Sega America, that are involved in the community. Whether it's um, you know chatting with them on Twitter or or or, or joining on podcasts, we might we might get some of their guys over here. The localization team is very mm-hmm. engaged with the community. The the QA people, you know, they have they have dedicated people just. Uh, just there to to be the face for Sega to to get a uh, feedback from the community. I mean, they're just really involved. They're not just this faceless entity, and and I like that. It's it's a huge corporation that has a small business feel to it, like the culture, and I and I've always liked that about them. And, and again, they've they spawned some of my favorite games of all time. And you know, I I think even now that they're just pu- doing publishing and software development, they still have some games that are like real gems. And you know, unless you're looking for them, you may you may miss them. You know, but anyway, enough of my about my Sega love. What's the next? Um, so yeah, now moving on from the game, the world of gaming, uh, in the world of podcasting, Dead Pixel Live hit um, 800 episodes. Oh, and yeah, 800 episodes is a big what milestones, a big milestone there. And uh, Derek H announced that it would be the last show, and uh, a, lot, a lot of us uh, over at All Games were uh, All Games chat on IRC were like sad about that. We'll miss him, but we we feel we know that we have a feeling he'll be back. But he's gonna be focusing on uh, doing things for the All Games Network. Um, but people were joking; they were like, "Hey, Horseplay should take his time slot on you know Thursday nights at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, right before PT Team Podcast." And I was like, "Well, that's really up to Derek H. You know, I, I won't say no. We, I, I'm sure we won't say no. I might be that'd be a huge change for us if we went on, a, on a, such an earlier time. Cause we're like the night owls. I wouldn't be able to make it though." I know, I know. That's the thing. But well, in two weeks I would be able to, but still, I. Um, now it's summertime and it's golf season now, so. Well, I'm sure he's got something lined up too. By the way, so, oh, you, if you're into golf, are you coming down for Masters weekend? You'll be in my neck of the woods no, then. No, because... can't do that. I got too much going on here. We got a business that my wife's running a business too, so we're kind of, we're kind of uh, I'm kind of uh, making sure that she gets hers off the ground and gets running, because uh. That'll just help me out in the future. Uh, no, <laughs> I get I get people that invite me to go on different mm-hmm. trips. And people are like, "Hey, I'll fly you out here for this convention, or we'll do this." And it's just hard for me to pick up and go. Not like my younger years, where I'd just be like, "Oh, sure, on a, on a whim, I'll fly out to Vegas or Atlanta and be like, done, whatever." And... Well, yeah, when we get to that point, of course, we'll I'll come out to see you. Yeah, I'll bring you up here. We can do a show. We'll do it in the studio. <laughs> One day, yeah. One day, and actually, all, uh, all Games Network they have their own studio too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's out in, in in Cali in LA. They have their own little uh, building, even so. 
you know, one day if we do if we do end up working with uh, all games officially, you know, and that might be, a, be one uh, of the future announcements there. That'll that'll be that's, that'll uh, be really fun. Yeah, being being in a physical room with other people, it changes the whole dynamic completely. But um, you you have any other news, uh, Obi? Well, I kept it pretty short this this um, week. Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think I think we've hit everything actually. Um, what I do want to let you guys know is some little bit of news is, uh, just a reminder: we are going to be uh, consolidating a lot of our uh, the horseplay and you know the geeky antics and all that stuff. We're going to be consolidating a lot of that uh, to where we can actually, like we said earlier. Of course, get you guys on the on the show itself, uh, even here live on the stream. Uh, but just making sure that you guys can get in there and it's just as much happy, happy thoughted viewers and listeners as we possibly can get. Because that's you know that's what we want to do. That's one of our goals for this show and even future shows. We want to make sure that we get just a bunch of viewers and bunch of a uh, bunch and bunch of listeners. So, because um, I actually listen to uh, right around Sunday night, maybe Monday morning, I'll turn on my uh, my uh, my cell phone, put my earphones in, and I'll listen to our <laughs> our show on Stitcher uh, from Thursday. So it may kind of give us a little bit of a you know what we're doing, how we're doing it, and you know. Uh, things that I can work on myself, you know, like the the intro today it was totally different, you know. So now I, you know, I worked on on that. So we can just keep going throughout the show, and then we're just gonna be badass, straight up. Word. Speaking of badass, <laughs> word. Did you see my my uh, post production work on the last episode? Mm -hmm. I did. The little studio studio fades and everything. I did. I did. I did like I, it. I, I pimped it, bro. I pimped it, bro. Now, <laughs> I got a question for you, Yogi. You've been talking a lot lately, this show. But I know... <laughs> don't take that the wrong way. But I know... That sounds bad. <laughs> Out of context. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But I know that you are uh, with our geeky antics, with our with our, our new network and that we're, we're forming and everything, that you still want to give stuff away. You still want to give games away. You still want to give, um, you know, anything and everything that you can possibly give away to our viewers. What What are some of those some of those stuff we got that it's 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 going to be on Geeky Antics. Dot WordPress. Dot com. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, what are the some of the stuff we're going to be giving away here so, shortly? So yeah, originally it was going to be like a cross promotion thing across both of mm -hmm. our Twitch channels. You know, and and it, we'll definitely like uh, use that to promote it. But I think the main hub's gonna be on geekyantics.wordpress.com. Mm -hmm. I might be waiting for us to get officially hosted on, uh, get us set up on a self-hosted server so that we could do uh, like a full plug-in with you know the giveaway right in the on the blog, and uh, do it that way, make it much cleaner. Um, but part of that will you know what we'll probably be doing before we even kick the giveaways. In full, in full, you know, full gear, came to full gear is uh, stop reading the chat. <laughs> no, but uh, what we'll probably do is is maybe do like a little bit of fundraising because some people said they wanted to pitch in and donate and stuff. So we'll probably start setting up that stuff. And we've been talking to some potential sponsors <clears throat> to do affiliate marketing endorsements and uh, get some free gear and stuff like that. Um, so there's a lot of things in the pipeline. But to start it off, we'll probably just make it very simple. Um, I'm, I might just do like a, a, a Twitch giveaway and then promote well, promote it on Twitch, but then do it on Geeky Antics, and there'll be a couple, a few games that we have, and maybe I'll just do like a couple of them, and then save the rest of them for we do the big giveaways, and there'll be giveaway after giveaway after giveaway, like we'll do several months of doing it back to back. But I got right now, I got in my inventory. Um, I think I got a copy of. Did I get a copy of Armor Two? I may have. I got so many things in there, but I know I got a uh, extra copies of Skulls of the Shogun. Uh, Magic 2014, um, Risk of Rain, Guns of Icarus Online, Hammer Watch. I even got Game Dev Tycoon, which is one I keep forgetting about. It's not a multiplayer game, but I, I think it's a fun one because it's one of those games, again, you can just pick up and play. And, you know, and it also gives you a little bit of insight into the game development process. It's pretty neat the way it simulates the game development. It misses some of the marks and stuff, but it's really fun. But most of the games, you know, the idea behind it is not just to give back to our community, but also to have give people games that they may you know they may not have the opportunity to get those games otherwise, and that we can play together, right. you know, and we love to ha set up those opportunities where we could you know 
get do giveaways and then follow it up with like a, a game night you know some different community events like that um so that's part of the uh, idea there and again uh, we're thinking about doing the league of legends uh horse play uh ranked teams for a casual play uh we'll be doing some of some of the, the these uh updates on our steam community group uh for horse play so you can connect with us there it's just horse play look us up uh, a lot of these will be Steam giveaways. Actually, pretty much all of them, I think, will be. Because it's the easiest way to get it out to people. Just send them the key and give mm-hmm. it to them. Um, without have to worry about shipping anything. Because shipping stuff, gets, it changed, the logistics of it changed a lot of stuff. We want to make sure people get this stuff in their hands right away and get to enjoy it right away. But, That's you know, fun. we'll eventually do some some like physical things like headsets and gaming mice, keyboards, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um and I'm definitely, I definitely have big plans to get back into Twitch because there was a time when you saw me. I used to do the Twitch for like, I used to do Twitch for like three to five hours a day, and sometimes I'd go on like six hour, six to eight hour marathons, like late night, and streaming everything from Scrolls to Soul Forge, League of Legends, Dota 2. I mean, everything under the sun I could possibly get my hands on, and also some lesser known games. Um, and I want to get try to get back into that once. You know, the main thing right now we're trying to get the foundation set. So that we could get some new shows on our on the Geeky Antics Network, um, start get some new exclusive contents and vlogs on there on top, on top of the exclusive shows, um, you know, setting up the site so that we can have new contributors and, and build a team. Um, we already have a few people on on board, and once we have that foundation in place and we have all the systems set up, we're going to be doing lots of community events, you know, not just giveaways, you know, not just sweepstakes. We'll do some contests. You know, where we, people could do custom art or music. I mean, all kinds of different things we'll do. And and even ha- try to set up volunteer opportunities for people that have talents. You know, we'll plug you. You know, we don't have, obviously, we don't have the funds to pay everybody, but we'll plug the heck out of anybody that contributes to our, t- our team. But if you want, you know, if you want to be part of the team, then you'll be part of something on the ground level and as we grow. You know, this is some really big thing. I'm excited about it. But anyway, well, and that, enough, enough and, my rambling. And that being said, no, what in that being said right there, we are still looking for um, an artist as well. Um, just uh, somebody that can help. Uh, just, I mean, because if you guys look at the overlay, it's not the best overlay. It's something that uh, we try to just throw together. I don't really know how to use GIMP, and it's kind of driving me crazy. But if it's, um, if we have like a, you know, a special holiday or something like that to where, uh, somebody that knows how to make overlays with either GIMP or you know Photoshop or something like that. Uh, that's something we would do too. I mean, we 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 would like some extra overlays just to have something different every now and then. Um, and then of course for the seasons, for the holidays, for the Fourth of July, you know, big fireworks in the background or you know something like that. Uh, but if you guys know anybody, let them know that we are looking because uh, uh, you know because it could it, it could it could help. So, no, yes, you can do custom art. Well, um, it, that that that's awesome. I'll get with you after the show if you're uh, still here, or I'll uh, actually send you a message on uh, on uh, Twitch here. So, really appreciate that, Yogi. Back to you. <laughs> we yeah, have I, a I, quickie. Well, yeah. Before we get into the quickie, the B Team podcast is still going on live. They're trying to compete with us tonight. Oh they man, they usually done at eleven. They're then, infringing they're on our going. time slot. I know. What's but up I, with that? I feel like he's just poke. I, I feel like he's just jumping into their Skype call and be like, "What's up?" <laughs> we. Oh my god! Imagine if we merge our shows and the, the chaos that would ensue. Oh god! Um, <laughs> like all the callers at once. Cause they got like four people in their chat right now. <laughs> oh man, dude. Oh my god! So yeah, quickie. This is a, this is a fun. This is a fun little quickie. That I, I I came across this. Uh, I think it was just listening to the Major Nelson podcast. You know, because I'm, I'm also a bit of a, of a Microsoft fanboy. Mm-hmm. We know <laughs> you're a fanboy. And, and they cool. have this thing, you know. It's uh, the, the theme of this of this quickie is where are you, where are y'all from? And the whole idea is that the New York New York Times, you know, ha- they have this whole thing that they shared of some some research where supposedly where you're from, you know, is is evident in in how you refer to things like. Uh, your terminology and different mini dialects, regional dialects or whatever. So they have a quiz that you could do on there. So just check it out. It's called a dialect dialect quiz uh, map. You, can, you should probably find that if you Google that. 
uh, or dialect quiz. This New York Times dialect quiz is just come up on Google mm-hmm. or Yahoo or whatever search engine you want to use. But uh, have you taken this, uh, Obi? I haven't. See, I was I, see, I was trying to get you earlier because I wanted you to take it so we can compare our results. I'm sorry, man. Forgive but uh, it's 25 questions. 25 questions. Maybe we'll share the results next week. And actually, uh, if you guys take the the, the test, maybe we, you could call in. Go ahead and link and it. Link us. it in uh, Twitch chat. Yeah, let let uh let us know if the results were accurate for you. Here you go. Here you go, guys. We're gonna link yeah, this I'll... in Twitch chat, and this is something for whoever's watching and whoever's listening right now. Okay, we're gonna give you, you know, you guys uh, take this quiz, and what I want you to do is call the voicemail two zero six four one five four nine eight seven. And let us know if it was, you know, good for you. <laughs> yes, it was good for us. Um, let us know <laughs> if it was good for you and accurate uh, on the voice on the on the voicemail, and then we'll uh, play them next week. Uh, wow, I couldn't help it, man. <laughs> I mean, it was good for us. Make sure it's good. It's, for it's you. always good for us. Did you get yours? <laughs> but yeah, mine was pretty accurate because I've moved around a lot, but I'm still a New Yorker at heart. Um, it was funny though when I when I lived in California f- for a little little bit I was I was there for like a year or two it wasn't that long of a of about but people were, didn't pick up my New York accent I think I started uh, becoming more West Coaster like I, I don't know I, I find like wherever I move to or wherever I'm around a West I pick Coaster up... no not not San Francisco I was San Diego none of that who hell no <laughs> none of that nothing no offense to anybody but you know <laughs> sorry but uh. But yeah, like like uh, I I tend to like be like a social chameleon. Like I pick up a lot of the the regional stuff, but here people tend to pick up more. Like in, on the West Coast, I I I adapted a lot easier, and they didn't know I was from the East Coast or from New York. But here it's like they like you're from up north, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, you're a Yankee, aren't you? <laughs> it's like yes, sir, I am. I know like, how to speak yeah. proper English. <laughs> Not yeah. y'all, y'all too. Hey, sometimes dear. I say y'all. Nah, you. I say I say y'all sometimes instead yeah. of, but usually I say you guys. That, that was one of the questions. You like, guys. Like, like, how do you refer? To, like, yeah, yeah. Use. Do you say use or you say you guys or use. do you say y'all or you all? Like, how do you refer to a group of people? But the questions change each time you take it, and what it does is shows a heat map <laughs> of, of oh yeah, that too. Dem. I think that was an option. Yeah, should have been. D E M. But uh. Well, you can't say them because that'd be that'd be third, like third person. It, it would have to be second person if, if you're ta- referring to them. You can't refer to some a group of people and say, "Hey, them." How, I didn't how you say them, them. I said them. Oh, d- like <laughs> them guys. You going? You going ghetto on it? <laughs> the chat, the chat, the chat's going crazy. I can't even keep up anymore. I'm not gonna look, look anymore. But it's it's cool though. Uh, again, New York Times, check it out. It's a, it's an interactive quiz. It shows a heat map. Of according to each answer and then your overall answers of where you be more, most where you're most likely from or where you most likely would identify. It's a, it serves two purposes. It it helps it helps to see what um, what it try to guess it tries to guess where you're originally from or where you identify with mm-hmm. the best. But it also can help you maybe figure out where you need to move to to really fit in the best. <laughs> You know, so if you're looking to move in somewhere, you know, it might it might work for that. It's pretty spot on, um, but there was some really random ones. Like it, it asked, like, uh, like for one of them, it asked, like, if you uh, uh, a a freight truck carrying cargo, what how do you refer to it? And there's like several answers that I I, I switched between it, and I said, oh, uh, I could call an eighteen wheeler or a, 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 a truck, just simple, you know, plain old truck, uh, or um, a tractor trailer. I mean, it's you know. Uh, there's different things you can use depending on what the situation is. And then, so there's lots of time when you go through that test and you're like, well, all of these sound good to me except for that one. But can I choose all, but you know, can I choose all of them except one? And, but you're going to choose one answer. The first, and usually you have to go with the first answer. If you want the most accurate result, go with the first answer that comes to mind. So yeah, I think that should be your homework, Obi. Take the test and then we'll compare our notes next week. And you got to make sure that we listen to the voicemails too. Because there could yes. be some really funny ones in there, and we will play those online. We will play those on the show. If he's going to play mine, and mine was really, really stupid, because I was just leaving a voicemail like he said, he didn't say he was going to play it online. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to play mine. We're definitely going to play yours. That's just uh, how it is. I'm, I'm tempted to play the voicemail now. 
How about you just don't? There's only three of them. Not that many. All right, play the first voicemail. This is, uh, we will, uh, get to it, um, after yeah, the voicemails. Before we get our, yeah, before we get into our feature, you know. Yeah, definitely. After the voicemails, we will get into a feature. So, uh, first voicemail, play mine last. Don't play mine first, please. Please. Why? Uh, okay. First voicemail is from me. Well, actually, I think I actually... Let me see. Let me you're, see. You're I think I took your, yours off the queue. Yes. So you saved. Well, this is this is our Geek Engage. Geeks, and, Geeks Engage section. So if you want to chime in real quick right now, this is the best time. And uh, then we'll go on to our feature discussion. But uh, uh, here, let me get the voicemail set up. I only have two to play. I only have two. Oh, I know why I took yours out. I'm playing yours anyway. No. Why not? All right. Oh boy. It'll be it'll be fun. Hold on. Let me let me cue it up. This is gonna drown a whole bunch of more problems for me. Why? Now, if you guys play League of Legends, pay attention to what's going to happen right here. <laughs> well, yeah, they they they're, they're going deep on the on the. Uh... League of Legends chat right now. I'll, and uh, I'll, Winter Life's talking about Teemo, learn how to Teemo. Learn how to Teemo. Learn how to not Teemo. I'll destroy Teemo. With Zach. Teemo gets a lot of Teemo gets a lot of hate, but Teemo is a very versatile champion. Yeah, he's and, a very, and he falls behind. He's done. And Teemo falls off late game anyway. Ah, Hard. see, yeah, there's some. No one can shut down my team completely unless my team is just that terrible. I never feel like I can fall behind and still feel confident right, like I can contribute with Teemo. You play your team. See, that's no fun. D dueling, that's different. Well, it's a team game. Yeah, Stop it. You're, okay, yeah. Even okay, we're gonna have a viewer game, okay? And then the first viewer game between Obi Wan X two and Yogi Zilla is gonna be whoever wants to play. But Yogi Zilla and Obi Wan are up top because we're gonna duel, and let the junglers come. Let the junglers come. You will play your Teemo, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna play. I'll play Zach. Okay. And I'm gonna stomp you. <laughs> First. See, voice see, that's one of the biggest. No, listen. This is one of the biggest problem with MOBAs is that people will treat them as a collection of one v one fights, and it's a team. The team aspect is the part that people need to work on no, the no, most. No, 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 no. I it's just, also... I just said no. We're gonna do a viewer game where we're gonna get on here and we're gonna stream it. Okay. Me and you are gonna do this. All right. We're gonna stream it. We're gonna have as many viewers as we can get on the team. So hopefully there's ten people watching, or at least eight people watching. So we get you take four. I'll take four. And anybody, any position can be taken but the two tops on each team. I'm going top against Yogi. And if you go mid, I will go mid. And then I will really hurt you. Nothing to say. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. But all, um, what was I going to say to that? I'm not going to say anything to that right now. Other, other than I, I think... <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like you'll people, see. No, the thing is people... Fit, at like Teemo is a one trick thing, you know. Uh, and there's so many different paths to to go with him. Anyway, Tim Curtis took the test. He's and, several and, and, hundred uh, the, miles north. Yeah, he it says he should be from Modesto, California, but he's several hundred miles north. But they got him in, at least on the right coast. And again, you know, if you've moved, the, if you have military background or you've moved around a lot, or you're nomadic. Mm -hmm. Or you just do a lot of business travel, you know. Especially in military, it's really hard. I, that's the thing. The toughest thing for military is, for, is to acclimate to a certain area because you move around so much, you never really feel completely anchored down, you know. Unless you find a good woman, and Obi's my woman. <laughs> just, just wanted to catch you off guard. Anyway, voicemail time. Here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. Let me know if you hear him all right. Here we go. And it did now. I thought. I, uh, I got the videos one. <laughs> Can't let her hear it. You hear it? Apparently this guy's <laughs> laughing like... so hard that he could barely contain himself. Yeah, you hear it though? <laughs> I do, he's laughing. I don't know what he said. I... And, uh, I put it in my swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> he 
<laughs> yes, what? hello. Is this horseplay? The secret club that sends out... Hold on. That last oh, voicemail. Yeah. What? Yeah, I, I'm hello. still trying to figure out. I listened to it several times. I don't know what he put in the swimming pool, but... That's one of the best voicemails I've got we got in yet. And we just started doing this. <laughs> all right, all right. Play it again real quick. Right, everybody listen. I turned it up. So. The first one? Yeah. All right, I'll turn, back to, I'll, I'll turn up the volume. Here we go. Horseplay. I, uh, I got the videos one. <laughs> He's laughing so hard. It's so funny. I think he's high. He's something because he's just fucked up. And he says and, he put uh, it in the pool. I put it in my swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for yeah, your call. Is this thank you for he, your he's call. another one. He these other two the other two ones are quick. Yeah, that was a, whoever that was. Thank you for that call. That made for some very good radio. And and and, and, and if you're weird. listening, <laughs> you, and I, we like that though. So if you're listening and you can figure out what that is, decipher that message, let us know. Because I'm still at a loss. I know what Obi is too. Now here's, here's the next one. And I think this one's from Tim Curtis. Play, the secret club that sends out call girls for free? No? I wish. Okay. Hey, guys. It's Tim Curtis here. I'm just calling in to support one of my favorite podcasts, one of the best ones on the internet, Horseplay. I uh, love you guys, Yogi and Obi. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, and I think it's really awesome that you got a um, voicemail line now. So I uh, hope to hear some voicemails from our fellow community members, and keep it up, guys. We really appreciate that, man. That, that's cool. Here's the best one. You ready? Oh, God. Oh, my God. I'm so happy I'm talking to Yogi and <laughs> Oh my god! What's up, gang? Obi and Lennox Drew here. We'll see you guys tonight, right on the show. I love you guys. <laughs> see ya! Ready. Ready. I told you, we'll see you on the show. And you, you held up your promise. I hate That's you. That's it for West for now. I hate you. That, hey, that was awesome. <laughs> And we haven't gotten any, any new voicemails since that. So, oh, we did. And uh, no, that's Holy not crap. a that's not a voice changer. And I'm gonna actually do it right now because it, a lot of people don't really didn't hear it. But if you play League of Legends, you probably know who this is. But I do quite a few voices from there. And this is the one that always just gets people. They're like, "What the? He usually got a voice changer or nothing." All right, hands are up. <clears throat> you guys hear me just like this. You want to play? It'll be fun. <laughs> Have you seen my bear tippers? I'm no voice changer, no nothing. Hi. Nope, not at all. <laughs> yes, I can really do that with my voice. And no, I'm not grabbing my balls or something to make them squeal. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your balls, then cough. We got we. What else? We just got another voicemail too, by the way. Well, let's play it. We got one more voicemail here, and then. Uh, we got an interesting feature for everybody. So let's yeah, I gotta queue it up real quick here. But uh, while while I queue, get this ready, what, what's going on over in the chat? <clears throat> well, T. T Curtis is like, uh, well, he does he can't sleep. And uh, what did he put in the pool? We don't know what he put in the pool. Um, we're kind of scared to know what he put in the pool. And then he yelled Obi uh, as I was doing the uh, Annie voice. <laughs> oh lord all right i'm really hoping here we go call back here later this week and say well what i put in the pool was <laughs> and start laughing again because it was great we get we got a floater that's one of those situations oh yeah you ever that, that you ever been in the pool and then it's like no, it's like parents that bring Really young kids into the into a public pool. They no, don't do that. that. Sounds like it's all you, buddy. No, I, I have, I have more. Yeah, I know. That's it. But I mean, like if you're in a water park or something, you know, oh, yeah. you can't avoid it. All right, I've last seen that that situation. Yeah. There. All right, here we go. Here we go. 
This is going to be brand new. I don't even know what it is. Hi. <laughs> Teach me how to Hi. demo. Teach me how to demo. Please. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to Dark Creeper. Yeah, that's it. Bye. All right. We need to teach him how to teamo. Teach me how to teamo. Teach, and, teach me uh, how to teamo. And Dark Reaper got a shout out. <laughs> I'm sure that was Dark Reaper himself, probably. Giving himself a shout out. Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. I don't know. All right. We have done that, guys. Uh, every every week before the feature, we're going to get into our, our voicemail box and, and play some voicemails that you guys have left us throughout the week. Um, be sure to leave them, you know, even if it's just say, hey, what's up, and uh, say hi to everybody on the show. But as of right now, we're going to come up on our feature, um, and I'm um, going to play a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a break, uh, about 30 seconds or so. But uh, right back with The Secrets of 13, dabbling in the supernatural conspiracies and espionage. Is it all connected? We will be right back. Coming back in, the feature said to you guys before this little uh, little break, Secrets of 13, dabbling in the supernatural conspiracies and espionage. Is everything like that connected? We don't know. Let's talk about it. We do have uh, a couple of shows that I watch, um, that Yogi watches. Uh, I think we both watch almost the same thing, except for I think one or two here. Um, <laughs> I think well, I know which ones those are. Uh, we both watched Burn Notice. If you guys uh, know that show, it's uh, of course about of a, a spy that got kind of blacklisted, and um, we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, Agents of Shield. I don't know if you guys have ever watched it. It's Marvel. Uh, Agents of Shield. It's kind of like uh, get into the guy with super strength, the the computer chick, the the. And it's not uh, not your superhero. Um, it is a superhero show, I guess you could say, but it's not your typical superhero show. Um, it's just a group of people that, uh, you guys would have to watch it. I can't even explain it. We'll talk a little bit more about that in here in a minute. Supernatural, and of course, our, the, uh, the best zombie show, of course, The Walking Dead. Ogie. We're going to start off with The Walking Dead? No, no, that's the last one. But that's that's some of the the collections that we like, um, the some of our, our our key shows that we really like to talk about. Now, yeah, you know, I think this is like uh, for me, like I don't know about you, but the shows that 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 appeal to me the most, like I don't I don't watch too much TV. But when I do, I, mm -hmm. I I like a little bit of supernatural element, fantasy, sci-fi. I like conspiracy theories, like you know, un underground societies, spies, stuff like that. There's and a, all these shows have all or some of those elements, you know. Well, and there's like I'm not like I'm not into like sitcoms or anything like that. Right. And well, and there's Usually. one, and there's one actually on here that uh, that's not on here that I know I'm gonna get picked on for this. But um, my wife actually got me watching it, and I'm sure you could probably guess what it is. Um, but it's Vampire Diaries. Oh, yeah, and they, and they got the spinoff for that, the originals. Yeah, the originals, which is the originals from the Vampire Diaries. they got a show with them now. Um, yeah, I watched that casually, but there's, it's, there's, how many seasons are, there, are they in, on that? I don't even know, man. Uh, I stopped yeah. watching it after the second season. Uh, I liked the, uh, you know, Klaus and, and, and some of the, uh, some of, uh, like, his brother and some of the other originals. So I'm going to start watching the naturals here, uh, um, but, uh, or the originals. But uh, I mean, then that's 
Damn. She just made me think about another one. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, you know, in, in terms of vampire shows, and there's there's a bunch of them really. If you think about it, as it's been over the years. Mm-hmm. But I think like True Blood is the better vampire short show when compared to My the. My wife sucked me into that one too. Yeah, that one's that one's good. Cause that and part, it showed that boobies. Part, yes, can't beat that. Uh, Rogue from the X Men, mm-hmm. the girl that plays Rogue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know. Uh, Vampire Diaries to me, it feels like it's more geared towards an audience, like a female audience. Whereas True Blood has something for everybody. I feel, you know, right. And it's it's a little more interesting uh, plot lines. But again, like I, I've missed so much of Vampire Diaries, I don't feel like going all the way back to the beginning. So I just watch it here and there with my better half. But I'm surprised you haven't seen the, uh, you know, Fringe, Warehouse 13, or or Sherlock. Even I don't really watch a lot of TV. Uh, yeah, my I mean, wife's I... gotta my wife's gotta tackle me sometimes so that we can watch our our weekly shows like we watch Nashville and the NCIS NCIS LA uh, that we watch together you know so it's something that we do together um, and she's gotta damn near nail me to the chair you know it's for me to hey sit down we're watching this right now <laughs> but uh you know, see the the crime shows they're like a dime a dozen mm-hmm. but if I have to choose one I would say NCIS just because it has Abby Gibbs Gibbs is the man. Oh yeah, and Gibby too with the little the gift smack in the back of the head. But Abby, come on, Abby's a cutie. And she looks like she's like thirty, but she's like fifty something. Abby's not that old. Yeah, dude, I'm serious. She's in the late forties, early fifties, I swear. No and, way. But she looks like she's thirty something, I swear. There's no way, I, dude. I read it somewhere. Then you Incredible. read some lies. No way. No, I'm telling you. And and, and my better half, she confirmed this. She's into that whole thing. She knows. She's the one that knows the actors and actresses by name. I'm I'm not that guy. I'm freaking looking it up then. You look it up, but I'm a, I'm gonna talk about some of these shows. Go ahead. But by the way, we'll talk about Ages of Shield because there's been a couple of new episodes that came out, and we could talk about that. And and also, on, uh, I'm gonna be on the Agents of Shield cast next week with uh, Chip Sella and um, Andy Urquhart, Urquhart from uh, Forty Two Level One, and I think he also does Starling City, Starling Starling City Radio. I believe he's on that show too, which is dedicated to the Arrow show, you know, DC Universe. Well, Agents of Shield and Marvel Universe. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna be, I'm gonna be on that show next week, and I'll be airing next Friday. Uh, not all games, but uh, we'll talk about Agent of Shield in a little second here. Right. I've been really on. A, I've been on a supernatural kick, and that show's gonna it's going strong still. They already been renewed for a, a season ten. I don't know when it's shooting, but they had a, the season nine was short. Um, and a, lot, and a lot of people kind of say that it's a, it's a very shallow uh plot but it's fun and my favorite actor on that show is misha collins that plays uh the angel castiel Mm -hmm. he's just such an awesome character he's a lovable character he's and he's just he kicks ass but like uh he's so he just shows such a broad range of emotion and he does it so well he plays the the roles he's given on the show so well it does and uh, he's have you seen have you seen supernatural um i started to watch it a little bit um and I just never got into it because I had a whole bunch more shows. Um, it's something that I've been looking at, uh, actually, Netflix lately, um, just because I wanted to watch another, uh, uh, basically, a vampire movie or a show. Yeah. So, um, it's rough. It's rough because it's like Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, where like there's so many seasons, and if you join it late, there's so much to catch up on. Right. But the good thing about it is with Supernatural, even though there are like overarching stories, you know story arcs that you know they have underlying themes and whatnot it's very episodic you you can skip around a little bit it won't be too bad right. and i noticed what they tend to do in every season they usually have the first three episodes and the last three episodes you could watch those to get the full closure because they recap everything so well mm-hmm. and they tend to really finish the main storyline of any season in the last few episodes you know, sometimes they just rush it in like the last one or two episodes. It's like boom, done, resolved. Right. And on to the next thing. And I'm probably gonna get my man card pulled for this. Okay. I I'm really banking on it. But I wish they would actually make a uh something a, a show that had, you know, of course the vampires. But then and here we go. Uh like, you know, the movie Twilight where they had the the the, the werewolves too. Or the uh, you know the wolves too, 
with the the clan. I wish they'd actually make a show like that, to where it's not just the movies, but it's an actual episodic, you know, type. Uh, it's like it's like Twilight, basically, just but in show format, I guess. Yeah, because or, it is supernatural, and I like werewolves and vampires and all that other shit too. But you know, yeah. And like I said, if I get my man card pulled, I totally understand right now. Um, but I like Twilight movies; they're they're pretty interesting because of all the action scenes. I tend to fast forward. I get yelled at all the time when we're, parts. <laughs> when me and my wife are watching it, and we're just sitting there, and she's kind of half asleep, and I'll start fast forwarding through all the all the bullshit. To see, like, you know, to see him, you know, jump in the air and turn into a freaking werewolf. That's awesome. Me. Uh, you know, but stuff like that. And then she wakes up and says, what are you doing? Rewind it. So then I got to watch it all over again. You know, it's okay, though. But yeah. See, I think, I think what they should do is have a TV show where it's, like, the, the monster side of the story. Like, how do they cope with the day-to-day stuff? Mm-hmm. Kind of like Beat Human did. But maybe on a greater scale, talk about all the underground societies and how they keep hidden and how they deal with like rogue monsters, you know, some rogue supernaturals, you know, to keep themselves hidden. Because in almost all these stories, you know, the supernatural beings, they're very, they're, they're a dying breed. And, you know, for them to coexist, they have to live hidden. True Blood is one of the few shows that breaks that. You know, everybody's actually fully aware of vampires and other creatures. Well, just vampires existing, but. People start to suspect other kind of super beings, uh, other superhuman beings out there. Um, but uh, you know, it'd be cool to see the other side of it. Like, how do the those those creatures, you know, survive day to day? Like, how does a vampire, you know, try to blend in and not not get caught, found out, or whatever? Well, with True Blood, though, they actually had like a fail safe with the uh, with the Revain that everybody had to drink. So, like everybody in that town. Or is that, that's not True Blood, that was uh, actually Vampire Diaries, I think. Everybody actually drank Revain, which was like a vampire repellent, basically. But I think that was in Vampire Diaries, never mind. Yeah, I think that was Vampire Diaries. In True Blood, they had the, the, the um, synthetic blood that they were produ- they were manufacturing so that the vampires wouldn't feed on humans. And the, hum- and the, vampire, the vampires just came out and said, hey, we, we're here, we exist, we've existed for, you know, eons or centuries, whatever. And we're 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 cool peeps, yo. Just get to know us, <laughs> you know. So that was you cool. If you don't mess with us first, but uh, that's the supernatural stuff now. And we and that, that you know I, I've kind of loaded up this 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 uh, this whole um, feature here. We could talk about the supernatural stuff a lot, but I think another aspect that's neat and it's more the what Agents of the Shield. Uh, you know, gets into. I mean, they have the supernatural aspect in Agents of Shield. It's the best of both worlds because they have the spies, the espionage. You know, they got the the more realistic stuff, and then they got the supernatural elements. But uh, you know, Burn Notice. I'm I'm sad to see the show go, but I guess it had to go before it ran out of steam. But that was a great show, man. It's just how you know, just the the, the things that they have in there. But I'm surprised. That if you since you like Burn Notice, mm-hmm. you haven't gotten into White Collar. White Collar has got delved into like all the conspiracy theories and underground society. Like they get into the number thirteen and like you know the the, the Freemasons and how like the number thirteen and the number thirty three are the most sacred numbers. Um, I even have a little link there on forbiddenknowledge.com it has something about uh freemasons and number 13 and 33 and they they in white collar they incorporate a lot of that 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 lore in there about how these all these all these underground societies like the first spies the culpers george washington's uh spies uh am i boring you ob what show is that no i can't remember that show i was talking about earlier oh never mind oh uh, another one that another try one to think. Yeah, that, another one that I've been watching actually, which is something about with white collar and the um, uh, the uh, dang it, the oh, it's supernatural stuff. No, uh, Sleepy Hollow. No, yeah, Sleepy Hollow. The Freemasons, but uh, another with the Freemasons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they talk about that. Yep. On that's uh, the tie-in. Um, if so you guys actually are interested in a lot of the Freemason stuff, which if you guys like a show like that, uh, Sleepy Hollow, it's basically 
Um, you guys know the story of Sleepy Hollow, Hollow and Ichabod Crane. And, you know, where, you know, the cartoon that everybody knows more about is, you know, he, he takes care of the Headless Horseman, but he disappears, basically. Um, this is kind of showing a little bit of light of what happened uh, in, in, in basically the producer's eyes of the show. But basically, uh, Ichabod and the Headless Horseman, which was the Horseman of Death, uh, in, 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 in Sleepy Hollow. I don't want to ruin this for anybody, so I'm only going to give you a little bit of it. If you guys want to watch this, is, it is a great show. It is coming back. Um, it is, I think it's a summer, a summer series, if I'm not mistaken. I think so, because me and my wife have been waiting on it for comeback. But anyway. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm catching, like, uh, like, the mm -hmm. recordings of it, the reruns, so to speak. Right. Well, it's, it's if you guys know about that, um, where uh, it's Ichabod Crane, and they were back in with George Washington. Uh, Ichabod was one of his, one of his, uh, basically his, one of his guys, one of his, I don't know, one of his uh, officers. I don't know if he was one of his officers, but he was one of his right hands. And basically, uh, you know, George Washington had a huge, uh, not a conspiracy, but a huge, uh, uh what is it called? Something that's put on, you know, put on your back. Basically, you have a huge burden to keep, you know, the world safe from from evil or from the devil or whatever. Uh, but it's a really good show. I'm not gonna get too much into it because I'm gonna throw myself off and throw my tra own train of thought off. But we'll get <laughs> in that. But if you guys want to watch that, Sleepy Hollow is a really good one. Yeah, yeah good good call on it. I, I, you know, now I'm like, damn you. That's another show I gotta get into. But I'm glad it's only a season in, so not too much to catch up on. Right. But I watched the pilot, the pilot, and the second episode. Well. Yeah, yeah, the pilot. So episode one and two, um, and 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 just from the beginning, it, it hooks you in. I was surprised. Uh, the my wife didn't didn't like it. She said it was it was kind of stupid, and and I'm surprised. It was, I thought it would well, be right up her alley. Hey, no, but I gave it a chance. I liked it. Tell her, tell her. The first six episodes of Sleepy Hollow is boring as frick. Yeah, because she has to exposition. get past that. Because if she gets past that, dude, she's gonna love it. Oh. What's the thing? I think if you op come into it with an open mind, you see the potential with it. Because the way they combine all the, all the different lore, like, see, like a white collar takes a more, you know, very like down to earth look at the Freemasons. But in in Sleepy Hollow, they combine more supernatural elements, and it's like mm -hmm. the the Freemasons fought the devil, and they they prevented the apocalypse, and they were trying to fight the Four Horsemen, the coming of the Four Horsemen, and all this stuff. And it's like, whoa, that's some deep stuff. And it, and and at first you're like that's they really, that's a really big stretch, but it's cool the way they like merge that all together. And I like, I, I I don't Are know you, I, I was hooked right out right off the first show right off the first first episode. Right, and you I, can I, actually, I like what's going. and you can actually watch it and kind of think about maybe this hey, this is kind of could be kind of true the way they actually portray it and actually tell the story. Um, it's it's like I said it's a really good watch uh, if you can. I mean it's not I think we're only through third season, second season. We just ended the oh. second season. Yeah. Oh, did it, did it start yet, though? Mm -hmm. Did the second season start yet? I think we're starting on... No, it is just the second season. So there's only one season to catch up with. You guys can get all that yeah. if you go to... What is it? Uh, what channel is it on? Is it TNT? I thought that was... Uh, or is it... Was it, a... was it one of the local channels? I thought it was an ABC show. Was it an ABC? It's... Well, if it is ABC, CBS, any of the local channels that you guys use, that everybody usually gets, you can go to abc.com and get all the and watch all the last season for free. It yeah, I'm pretty it sure it's an ABC. I'm pretty sure it's an ABC so... show because that's also where Grimm is on. Yeah, yeah, right? okay, that is ABC then. So abc.com, yeah. you guys can go check that out. Sleepy Hollow, watch it from start to the end of the first season. The second season starting here in a couple months. Or at least another month, so uh, you guys won't be missing out much. Yeah, I'd also like you know we won't have enough, obviously we won't have enough time to talk about all these shows, but I, I definitely recommend Fringe, Warehouse Thirteen, uh, and I already mentioned the Sherlock and Doctor Who. That's one of my recurring ones. But Warehouse Thirteen is one that I would also say um, is worth looking at if you if you like Eureka or if you've ever seen Alphas. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'm gonna I'm gonna warn you this re this recommendation comes with a uh, prefix. It, these are spy, um, sci-fi shows, and you know, lately they've been doing some weird stuff. Like they've been canceling their good shows and then leaving other, trying to put in some other crap shows. Like supposedly they're trying to push for more reality, reality television, like ghosts, paranormal type shows. And it's like, ugh, please stop it. We have enough reality stuff in other channels, but 
Uh, so, you know, Warehouse 13, Eureka, and Alphas all take place in the same universe. Alphas only made it up to season two. And then it was supposed to do a season three well, with like six episodes and then they canceled. They canned that. Um, Eureka had a good run, like five or six uh, seasons. But that's more on the comedy side. Um, but it's still, it's more lighthearted, but it's a lot more. It's, it's just fun. But Warehouse 13 is cool because what, what that focuses on more is like. If you like Indiana Jones, where it's like finding artifacts and uh, that have special uh, powers, stuff like that, it, it explains how a lot of the supernatural stuff, you know, it ties a lot of those things to, to artifacts that, that make those things happen and, and how those things became artifacts. So I really like Warehouse 13. It has a really good cast of characters. Um, out of those three, I definitely would say Warehouse 13 is the one to check out. Eureka's great, too. I love Eureka. Uh, they have some good characters there, too. But Eureka focuses more. It's Eureka is more of the story of a of a town of like geniuses, and it's more about the technology. It's more sci-fi than anything else. Warehouse Thirteen is more a little more fantasy, but it's cool because they cross over. So if you watch both of them side by side, Eureka and Warehouse Thirteen cross over with each other. Um, Alphas didn't really get the opportunity to do that, but they do supposedly exist in the same universe. So it's a whole it's it's a whole universe shit to explore in it. Warehouse 13 now, they're going into season six. It's going to be a short season, I, I, I believe, and that's going to be the end of it. So if you're into marathon runs, at least you know there's an end point. So it's, you know, you can watch it at your leisure uh, <laughs> and know that it's going to come to an end. And it, it, I think it's going to come to a good closing. They, they're going to allow it to die in a decent manner with honor. <laughs> Well, and that's a lot of things that some of these, the networks do to these, some of these really, really good shows. They just, they just, it's done and then just blow it off. Like it's, it was never here. Like it's not, you know, that's not, you know, while those shows were actually online, it's not some of the most views they've had, you know, since, you know, for years, but they still want to delete them or still want to get rid of them because well, they want to make way for somebody else paid them just a little bit more money, I guess. How yeah. Goes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a bidding process and it's all kinds of, of like bureaucratical crap there, I'm, I'm sure. But yeah, it's a shame. It's always the good ones that go. Like, I was a big fan of uh, Firefly, and you know, we know what, what Fox did with that show. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about and, that uh, show, too. Well, yeah. And then the thing about it is that they, they weren't careful about. Uh, mm-hmm. Of, about the, how they drew the contract, and they made it so that Josh Whedon could not shop the show around on another, another network. It was locked into Fox, so Fox killed it, and, and he couldn't put it in any other network. So that wasn't even an option. Usually, shows have hope. If there's enough fanfare, they go on another network. You know, they'll pick up the show. Definitely. You know, especially a show, a, a network that doesn't have good programming. You know, and it could use some other variety. But nope. I mean, that's why Stargate, Stargate SG One, one of my favorite shows of all time had 10 seasons, you know, and Fox originally killed that show and sci-fi picked it up and that was a good move on their part. And, uh, yeah, what can you do? Hey, there's nothing you can do really. I mean, once they're done, they're done. You just hope to God that the network's bringing up something that else that actually is worth a damn. Yeah. Well, suppose, you know, there might be hope because I mean, um, Fox is bringing back 24, you know, they're continuing that. That's yeah, but series. I never really got into that. I mean, it was just something that, you know, I don't think my wife even got into that. I think my you father all did, but that's, he watches crazy shit. Jack Bauer is a fun character. He's kind of exaggerated. Mm-hmm. He just does insane stuff. But it's really intense, you know, watching the story unfold hour by hour. And there's obviously, you know, each hour there's going to be some filler in between there. What they're doing now is they're going to change it so there's less filler. Instead of doing, you know, each episode is one hour in a 24-hour period, they're going to make it so there's 12 episodes, and they skip around through the, uh, the two hours. So instead of just highlighting the full hour, it's going to be like two hours and it's just the, the big key points in each thing. So there's going to be less filler. So it should be interesting doing that format. You know, we'll see if, if 24 can still get the ratings it used to. They're also bringing back Heroes. And supposedly that he- the new hero yes. is going to be... Did you hear about that? I love Supp- that show, man. See, that show fell flat at the end. Like, so much of the last season is a blur well, to it's me. because they planned on, actually, they already had set up for another season. And then the show cut them, the, the, the network cut them. And now they're actually, they're actually bringing them back because they said it wasn't enough views, but they were looking at wrong numbers or some BS crap that they've had to do. And now they're actually getting it all back. 
But I, I supposedly hear they're, they're reboot they're rebooting it though. Like they're starting from the beginning. Yeah, they're actually starting with different characters, which is if it's not any good, and I'll know after the first first show, their pilot, or even episode one, I'm not gonna watch it if it's not good. See, they're gonna have to do really good casting because a lot of the guys that are were part of that show, they moved on to other things. Yeah, I know. And that's good. They waited so long that it just it screwed everything up. So now 90, 95% of the cast didn't want to do it because, or did, couldn't do it because they were already locked into other contracts, which that's basically, you know, the freaking network's fault. Just how it is. I'll be happy when it comes back to see what it actually either has involved to or went to shit to. How's that? <laughs> we'll have to keep track of, of that because the casting is going to be the big thing, you know, because uh, they had a lot of really good, players like um i forget where claire was it the hayden panetary uh character the cheerleader mm-hmm. her and her dad were awesome and i've seen him uh, her dad the guy that put her dad on other shows uh what show was the last one i saw him i think it was on burn notice he was on yeah yeah Bur- on burn notice he was uh the uh was it burn notice a white collar now i'm not lo- i'm like do everything's a blur I know he was one of, on one of those show as like a FBI agent or something. Um, oh, are you talking about? Was it wasn't Sam? Was no, it's not. Um, mm. It was a guy that used to that wear like the Sam the, the uh, thick glasses. Oh no, that wasn't that was burnout. It wasn't. Was it burnout? Was it burnout? Notice he was on. I'm trying to remember. I straight up said burnout. Uh, no, that wasn't burn notice. It was the other show. I can't remember. I know who the ones are for Burn Notice. Uh, there's Sam. Um, well, yeah, Sam. Uh, yeah, Sam Max. Everybody loves him. That's Bruce Campbell. That's my boy. Yeah, but that's he, it's. It was basically his same part, but the other one had glasses. It's a different show. Don't ask me no more. I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, they, really they had a good know. cast on that show. <laughs> Just the, the guy, shit. the guy that played, uh, was it Peter? Was oh no, the younger brother. Peter was the one that was the politician. It's all coming back to me. The one, but the one that had the ability to absorb other people's powers on heroes. He, Milo is the, the actor's name. Oh, Milo, the bad something. guy at first. No, you're thinking about uh, the guy that plays Silar. I'm talking about the younger brother of the politician. He's he's doing another like series. He's been on a few things, but he's he's doing like a, another series. Yeah, that's the a, the ultimate. Netflix, he was a Hulu the one, series. Yeah, he's the one that can jump up and fight. No wait, the politician on heroes. No crackle series. Yeah, the, you know, the the mother, the politician, who is their son, and then the younger son, who's kind of like the one the mother didn't love as much. Yeah, but the politician, has, he can fly. Yeah, but the his younger brother had the ability to absorb powers. Remember, Siler went after him, was trying to go after him to get oh, to absorb yeah, his yeah, power. Yeah. And he saved his brother several times from taking and being able to fly. Yeah, I remember now. Well, yeah. But he, that guy, that, that actor, Milo... Has a a short series, uh, a mini series on Crackle. It was one of the Crackle original series called Chosen. It's pretty good too. Nice. Um, so this this is cool. Like, uh, and a lot of these shows, you know, that do deal whether they deal with the supernatural, conspiracy, espionage, they mention like a lot of the stuff about underground societies, Illuminati, mm-hmm. Freemasons. You know how the number thirteen is sacred, and and they work that in the lore. Like number thirteen is sacred, so they don't. That's why they don't make buildings with the the thirteenth floor, or a lot, some books do not have a thirteenth chapter. You know they do all this kind of stuff. They go, oh. and it's cool to see. Like even though these shows, a lot of these shows are distinctly different. Mm-hmm. You know, in the subject matter, it all ties they, into it. Yeah, like so. It, you know, it makes you wonder. Like you know, maybe there's some truth to this stuff. You know. Like Big Brother and all that stuff. Well, and too, and this is a, a game reference, but the Illuminati was actually in the um, Assassin's Creed Four too. Black Flags. Yeah, they played a huge the, part in it too. You know, I I have to catch up with that series. I got, um, I I got Revelations mostly done, and I got Assassin's Creed three but I've, i'm told that one is like the worst of the series but it also opens up the new era where like the with all the pirates and stuff so i'm kind of curious about it but i've heard a lot of good things about black flag i just don't feel like i should jump right into it without playing the other ones right so but yeah the, yeah assassin's creed as far as games go man assassin's creed is all about talking about you know giving a different spin on history 
people that we thought were heroes were actually bad guys. All these underground societies, the Templars, the Illuminati, you know, the Assassins, the Assassin Order. I mean, all that stuff. They, they, their lore is amazing. And see, that's what that's another reason I love Stargate because Stargate used to take all this different lore and and then from different kind of uh, subject matter and then they make their own, they created their own mythos. Like they talked about the Egyptians, who they really were, who the gods really were, and how the gods weren't really gods. They were using technology that was way ahead of us, alien technology, and they made themselves seem like they were gods. And you know, I love like all these wow. shows that take different have different takes on all this stuff, man. Well, it's like we talk about it forever, man. In the in the assassins order, you know, the uh, the the, the... Uh, I don't remember what it was called exactly in the Assassin's Creed. Uh, the Assassin's Order is actually another part that flakes, flakes, uh, branches off into the, the show Arrow, um, where, uh, what's her name? Um, do you watch Arrow? I do, dude. Uh, the, is it, is it worth, the, sister, is it worth... the sister that actually went on the boat with him in the beginning... She actually joined that assassins guild that that you know uh, they're the world's you know finest assassins and that's part of the assassins creed you know it kind of mixes in a little bit there too but um, hmm. not all the way um, because they don't ever talk about you know Illuminati or anything like that in the show but I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't go that way so at, at one point um, well dude I might have to give that show another try that's one of the shows like I'm not a big on I'm more of a Marvel guy than mm-hmm. DC. But, like, I, I started trying to get into that. The only thing I didn't like is that they show way too much of, like, shirtless Quinn. It's, like, it's half of it is, like, him doing push-ups and doing exercise shirtless. It's, like, come on. All right. We get it. But, we get, yeah, we got dude, later girl. in the show, you're going to see some almost shirtless uh, um, Laurel. <laughs> well, dude, is it, is it me or, like, the first few episodes of that? You said that with Sleepy Hollow, it starts off slow, the first five or six episodes. Sleep- is that the same thing with Arrow? Yeah, Arrow is probably, like, episode, you know, one and two or so. It's kind of setting up for what's going to happen because of everything that's going on because he was lost at a, in, on an island for, like, five years. Yeah. So it's everything that's setting up, and then they do flashbacks of when they went off into the ship and, and how, uh, what was his, her name, Jennifer or Jen or no, what was her name? No clue, dude. I don't know. It was Laurel and then her sister. Her sister actually snuck out to meet him at the Gambit, which is, you know, their family yacht. And then the yacht went down because they were, had a conspiracy. His mom had a conspiracy to kill his dad. So, and then they he was with them and she didn't know. So then, you know, dad and son went down and the daughter went down. So it was... <laughs> It gets good, dude. Huh. Trust me. If you're gonna watch it, so maybe it. maybe I'll watch it, uh, you know, and and skip the the second episode because I started watching the second episode. I'm like, this is kind of dragging on. Um, and I know they was trying to like, I don't mind exposition, but it was like so slow. Like I was like, there was so so many other things to watch. It's like ah, I need some instant gratification. It was like oh, please. <laughs> right, and like I said, it it and and most shows now a days that I've seen the new guys new new shows that are actually coming out, they actually start off really slow. Like there's no, I mean, I guess if you think about a pilot show or a episode one or two, they're kind of still setting up for what's going to happen uh, to make even the if it's a three or four or five season show so i mean they're kind of setting it up for everything but yeah dude it does get good but see this that's exactly why i appreciate marvel's agents of shield because you know they realized they 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 made a tough call they said let's take a break from the show and and break up the season and so we can make sure we do it right because most shows would have just come up with filler episodes to Mm -hmm. throw in there and they said, "Hey, we want to make make sure everything, every episode counts." And it's and it's a tough call because you might lose some of your audience, the people that already love the show. Right. They might lose interest and get drawn to something else. But I think that it's great the way they did it there. And so, yeah, let's talk real quick. What do you think about those uh, last couple of episodes? Finally introducing some real Marvel Universe um, assets, you know, and, and tying in like you know the Asgardian stuff. Yeah. Like, that started getting interesting. I, I did see that when it, yeah, at the end of that. One. Um, I can't wait, man. I, I really can't wait. I'm sorry, guys. I'm tired. Um, but, uh, I, I really can't wait for it to start just because, uh, with everything that happened and how it ended, uh, on that, you know, abrupt ending where they just canceled everything, I, what's going to happen next now? 
I mean, really truthfully, Heroes, I got to go back and watch it because I forgot. <laughs> I well, they're going to I remember they're the, going to re- they're going to reboot Heroes completely, supposedly. Right. Well, I still want to go watch it just to kind of get it in my head, kind of, you know, just to see the differences between the old one and then the newer one that's coming out. So I'm excited. We're, we're, talking, about, we're talking about Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., though. You, you, you just jumping around. No. The la- I'm talking about the last two episodes. Uh, Tahiti. Oh, I thought we were still talking about. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Duh. You are tired. I am, but yeah, I'm last exhausted. episode where. T- you know, the last episode was like Tahiti, and I forgot the other one, but where Tahiti you know, really doesn't just, exist, and he found out. Yes. Yeah, like, and and then like uh, we find out that you know, spoiler alert. And now he's pissed. You know, Agent May isn't really on the up and up. We we're finding out who her real loyalties are to. We're finding out it's a huge shield cover up. You know, they they introduced the Deathlock, but they brought in some as guardians. You know, they had uh, what's the name, N- Nilf, and um. Nif, I forget her name. Sylph. Sylph. Yeah. And uh, Lorelai, uh, the Enchantress's sister. But the one you thing, know, the funny thing is, is what is, do you remember what the cover up is as a whole? Well, the, the, the fact that, that the, the, the GH225 uh, or 235, whatever it was, is actually something that they extracted from an alien. Yeah, and they're actually when somebody dies, they actually bring them back to life. Yeah, uh, and think you know you were in Tahiti, you were on a vacation, you know, or this this, and they just brainwash them. Yeah, that one I can't wait either. I'm talking about like eight different shows right now, but yes, Agents of Shield. <laughs> I cannot wait for the new season to start. Okay, I'm back on track, Yogi. I think. So yeah, well, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do with that. I think they're gonna they have the, they have had a two episodes back to back, and they might take another little break. I hope they don't. From from uh, what I was reading, sorry, I'm cutting you off. But from what I was reading, they're actually gonna be doing two, no, three episodes, and then there's something that one of the I think one of the cast or a couple of the cast have to go somewhere for something major, so they're just taking like a two I think a two week break. And then they're gonna actually getting back to it, but they've already recorded the first two or three shows already. So, well, and then the other thing that's cool too is that they're talking about there's gonna be cameos from you know because all of the, the Marvel Agents of Shield takes place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so they tie into the movies, and it's all you know this all continuity throughout it, throughout the whole thing. So they're gonna have, probably have cameos. Already, they already had you know Samuel L. Jackson. Doing it as Nick Fury on the show, and I thought I was cool. I'm waiting for Thor so, to come down. <clears throat> I'm serious. You know what? I have a feeling he won't show. I can see maybe Loki. Maybe Loki. I'm thinking nah. Thor's gonna come help him. He's too big of a of a villain, and I think they already done Loki too much. Well, I think maybe, they're gonna. You know, I really think they're gonna do Thor uh, or have Thor come down because this is one thing that I'm saying. Um, one of the other. You know, somebody like Loki that's, you know, disturbing. And basically, Thor is going to have to come down to stop him, basically, because nobody else can. I'm saying it's just a little teamwork, and then he takes off. It's just like maybe one or maybe at the most two episodes that he would even appear in. And well, he's like, okay, we have you guys will ever forever be allied. I know you can trust you, blah, 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 blah. And then he leaves. You know, I, I have a happen. I have a theory about um, before we move on because we could probably talk about this a lot. But I have a theory about the clairvoyant. I have a feeling. Okay, guys, that I, yeah, we're still on our rule. <laughs> I, you know, more again, more conspiracy theories here. But either the clairvoyant is has the um, is the clairvoyant maybe is not gifted and she just has a lot of spies and she has bugs everywhere. I think the clairvoyant you know? is me. I think the clairvoyant may be connected to May. That's, That's one of my the clairvoyant things. is is May or one of now the May's, other May's boss or something. And that um, and it have to because you have to think about it. They, for some reason, she cannot uh, get a read on Agent Coulson because of the fact that he had the GH whatever three twenty five in him. Mm-hmm. And I think that's Alien Origin. I think it's a, a Cree. Uh, they started from a Cree or some other because uh, the different alien races that are blue, but we won't, won't get into that. But it could be Cree origin, some other alien race, and maybe that's something beyond the clairvoyant uh, power. Maybe the clairvoyant could also be a, a bad a bad person from Asgard, 
another bad person, you like know, said, because Loki. they sent Laura. Yeah, may, then they, maybe. Then they sent his brother to stop him, and that's just that's just how it is. He makes appearances in every freaking movie lately, man. What do you say he's not going to make an appearance in this show? Really? Yeah. Think about yeah. It. it only makes sense, but they're probably not going to do it because it makes sense. Yeah, so I don't know. But I think it's as it could be a, the, the Kavoyan could be as Guardian. That'd be interesting for them to do that. It would be kind of cool. Whether it's Loki but it's or someone else. Probably not gonna happen. They probably they've had this stuff all, all done up for a long time now. So I mean, it's, they're keeping they're keeping us they're doing good and keeping us guessing. Actually, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and I think also a big part of this show is that's gonna they they already said that they're gonna set up some movies some. New movies, new franchise, and everything. Uh, whether it's the Netflix movies that they're gonna have, or actual like you know, silver screen releases, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, they were talking about doing the Hell's Kitchen series with Daredevil and um, Elektra and all those type people as a, as, a, as a series or a movie right. series on uh, on um, Netflix. Um, and I'm, in, I'm I'm curious how they'll like combine. You know all those different worlds. You know, but they were supposed to do a a second uh, uh, Daredevil two, where Elektra and him were actually teaming up. Because you know, at the end they fought, and then they found out who each other was, and then she's kind of like, "I can't do it." You know, they were supposed to do something with a uh, Daredevil come. You know, he's still around, and then she comes back finally and actually helps him. But they never did that either. So, and it's just yeah, it's just another Marvel. You know. They have so many options right now for anything Marvel that they want to make because there's so many Marvel comics. They can come out with anything. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of Ben Affleck as Daredevil. Uh, unless, uh, well, except for when he was in the suit. It was pretty cool. But that was probably one of my least favorite movies, that and Elektra. They, it was, they were cool, but they were forgettable. Right. Okay. And I'm going to say something right here. Yogi, you can even do it too. You can call in everybody. This is the question for this one because I really, and I'm, I don't say this often, you know I don't. I want to come back to this next week and just do a second part of this because we're going to talk very a long time over this. We can talk about this. It, it's almost time. <laughs> so it's, I want to come back to this again. So what I want to do, and if that's all right with you, Yogi, we'll uh, talk about it some more. But right here for those that are listening and those that are watching live, of course, Next week for the show, I want you guys to call in and leave a voicemail, okay? And I want you to call in and tell us who you think. Man, Yogi, what were we talking about? I lost it. Who we think the clairvoyant is? No, the what we were just talking about. Who's going to make a cameo on uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Mm, no, I lost it. Or who's going to be the next Daredevil? Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> wow. If they do... We talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> I do. I, my brain's fried right now. Um, just from all the thinking I've had to do today and yesterday. For next show, this is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to think, and if they do make another Daredevil, don't be looking online. Don't be looking, because I don't think they have anything on it yet. Um, but if they do make another Daredevil, who do you think will be... Daredevil. Will it be a Ben Affleck or will it be somebody else? Leave us a voicemail, 206-415-4987. 206-415-4987. Yogi, I know we have some dust off to do. I don't know where I... It, it, a, little, a little bit. But I'm going to say I'm gonna say this. I, I think what I'm at, if we're going to talk full-on... Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm gonna have to catch up with the comics to have a little more back story because I'm so behind on the comics. Gotta that. Yo, that's I gotta, enough I gotta do it too, man. I gotta watch all my show. I I don't have any comics anymore, um, but I gotta watch all my shows and get caught up too. You got a week. Well, uh, I'm gonna plug this for you and uh, and our listeners and our viewers too that are watching us live. The Chip Stella over at Beat Team Podcast said that there's a a great promotion right now. Marvel has a subscription service where you have access to all their comics online. Everything. Okay. For $9.99 a month, but you get it for free the first month. And you can cancel that if you want at the end of that. And what's, or the, any time. Uh, what's the address? 
I forgot the link, but you can just Google that. Mar- Marvel Online, I'm sure it's, it's something like that will come up. Marvel Comics Online should come up. But they're doing that promotion. I don't know how long, but I, I don't know. I might I might bite I might bite and, and check it out. And I've been very curious to see where been, they've been taking because uh, from what I've heard from from real comic fans, like between DC and Marvel, DC has had lots of reboots and continuity issues. Uh-huh. Whereas Marvel has finally, now that they're having such so many hit movies come out and Disney backing them up on all this stuff, you know they got a lot of a lot of power now to to make big moves. Uh, they've been a lot more consistent with their storylines, so you know it, it's interesting to see that. So. And it'll, it'll make predictions more interesting if we have more of those backstories. Definitely. So yeah, you ready for the dust off? We are. We are. What are we? Um, I really haven't. Okay, you mind if I go first? I don't have anything hardly. Yeah, go for it. Well, um, yeah, good, good one. That was a good talk. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> good I really talk, haven't. Talk. I really haven't dusted off anything. Um, really, really new. I mean, I, I've been playing some league this week. Um, not very anything really heavy. Um, I did get a from one of my fans, one of my viewers that just wanted me to play with them. I got uh, now two of the Total War games. Of course, I have Total War Shogun Two. You guys have uh, ever played with me on there? Or wanted to play with me on there? We can do some co-op stuff, and we can even make a custom game to where we all just beat the hell out of each other. Um, and I got uh, Napoleon actually Total War. Um, I really didn't think, I thought I was going to be just, oh, it's going to be boring. It's just the same thing. It's just this, this, and that. And, but it, it just, I like it. I don't know why. It's no idea why, because it's really boring. Uh, <laughs> but, but I've been playing that lately. And uh, I've actually been getting back. I, I got on uh, the Daisy for, I don't know, probably about 20 minutes. And I got frustrated because I died like three times and had to run. I'm good. <laughs> they are talking about coming out with some uh, more Daisy servers that actually um, there's no PvP in it. It's all about hmm. the zombies and it's all about surviving, uh, which is basically it's, it's a survival server. Uh, but there's no you can't like another player can't shoot another player. It's kind of weird. Um, I don't and it might not go, but they're talking about putting a lot more zombies in there. Um, with what we talked about, if you remember what a, what a, a group of zombies is called, a herd. They're talking about putting more herds of zombies in there uh, into Daisy, so there's actually more walking around, which will be pretty interesting. Um, but other than that, I really haven't been playing much. Um, my wife and I, we've been playing a little bit of Hearthstone together, and then uh, of course I've been playing War Thunder. So I mean, that's really, of course, Arma too. Um, but uh, that's really that's. <laughs> I said that real low. <laughs> my, any of my clans watching right now, they're going to be like, really? Really? You said all those games, and then you're like, oh, I play Arma 2, too. Um, but, yeah, it, <laughs> that's a different, <laughs> that's a whole different thing. But uh, that's really all I've played this week just because I'm, you know, I'm busy. <laughs> what about you, Yogi? Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I, 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 you know, I have my mainstays. I've been playing Marvel Puzzle Quest, Doctor Who Legacy, Hearthstone. Uh, a little so forth stuff they you know pick up and play, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm definitely ha- hankering to play get back into League of Legends and uh, Dota two more like I used to, make it more of a consistent thing because uh, I don't want to get rusty and I also would like to to play with some of the listeners and get some rank play going and whatnot, uh, some more organized play going. But um, I played Daisy some more and I was just kind of looking around in the server to see what what's good, what's more my style. I made a a black character that modeled after Michonne from uh, Walking Dead. <laughs> I, I was sad that there's not that many options for the customization, you know. And I wish there was more, but you know, I know I know it's still an early release, but uh, you know, it's kind of neat. It's, 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 you explore a system, you don't find anything at all. You're just kind of going through houses and looking around, trying to collect mm-hmm. stuff. And it's like it's more like the tension of like wondering what's gonna happen. And along that same vein, I, I finally got to really play around with Slender: The Arrival, and I felt that was you know all these Slender games they they kind of get repetitive, but this one actually was really well done. And now that they give it a real chance, it's it's got a real interesting ambiance to it, and it's pretty spooky. The sound effects great. Um, they did a really good job with it, and um, I didn't realize there was some extended content in there. 
Like they have a lot of stuff in there that you could do. And I think that I even saw multiplayer in there, which I didn't know was even in there. So I'm about to tinker around with that some more. And it's definitely going to be a, a late night game. I and mean, hopefully I'll get around to streaming that. I even tinkered around with some Doom 3 uh, BFG edition just to throw it back a little bit. Very nice. And I, I think I'm going to play that all the way through. I never got to beat it the first time around when I played it on um on the Xbox and, and the uh, PC. But now I, now I have the, the Steam version. I got the first on the original Xbox, but then I just never really finished it. I, don't know, I get distracted, you know, shiny ball syndrome. But uh, yeah, definitely would like to get. I'm gonna play. I'm I'm, I'm gonna try to commit to get a lot more Hearthstone in, a lot more Soul Forge in, some League of Legends, some Dota two, you know, and um, maybe get some some of the community involved in in those games. In, in fact. Some of our fellow podcasters are jumping into Hearthstone, and are waiting for some of them are waiting for the iPad version to show up or the iPhone version to show up. So once that happens, I think we're going to be having some tournaments. You know, all the podcasters, all the listeners, podcasters for the podcaster, um, you know, so listeners versus podcasters, and so on and so forth. We we'll go, we we'll go big, big pimping style. And for some reason. I'm lagging again. He's lagging bad. But we're as while he's lagging, um we can just keep going here. Um what other uh wow, is there been has, is there any games that you've been playing that you just uh just haven't been playing anymore? That stopped playing altogether? Mhm. Uh... I mean, pretty much, there's a lot of games I would like to play a lot more, like Armada Online. I, I would like to play that a lot more, but I haven't had a chance to. I haven't been doing that much gaming, period. Um, I want to, but it's like I keep getting stuff. Like, I know right now, I'm working on different projects, you know, the gang stuff, and I've had clients come in with uh, requests. So, but yeah, I, I'm going to make a concerted effort to play more games and get back into streaming like I used to. But, um,. I'm trying to think what I haven't been playing that much that I was playing a lot of before. I mean, basically, League of Legends and, and Dota 2, like, Dota 2 games I was playing the crap out of. Uh, same thing with Soul Forge, and I haven't been playing nearly as much. So I want to get back into those games. But again, that's the kind, those are the kind of games that the good thing about it is that no matter how far, how long you're far you're away from it, you can get back into it. It's like, you know, riding a bike. But I definitely, I'm definitely interested in playing more Hearthstone. I need to level up some more and then get some good cards, start building some custom decks, because I still have a lot of the my core decks are still basically just the beginner stuff. <laughs> nice. But uh yeah, well, just let me know um too when we're actually when we can't play League of Legends or we don't have that much time, we can actually jump on and grab a couple, you know, a couple games of Hearthstone too. I'll beat you there too, it's fine. Not a problem. <laughs> unless you just, you know, unless you just want me to let you win like I, you know, do my wife. But um I mean, we can we can work it out. Once I uh, get decent cards, I, I'll be a good opponent. But for now, like, I like the matchmaking a lot in that game. Like, if I compare it to, like, Scrolls and, and um, Soul Forge, mm -hmm. it's pretty, Hearthstone is really good about matching you with people that have around the same amount of cards and experience as you do. So that's good because I, I hate when you get pitted against someone that, you know, spend a lot more money and time in the game because they have, like, epic cards and already legendaries, and you're like, pew, 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 I got nothing. Yeah, well, and some of that is if you're, you know, level one or two with a deck, or even level ten with a deck, you're only it's they're supposed to be doing it, which it doesn't work still, um, to where you're only going to be playing against those people that are that level. So yeah. they can't have. I mean, they can have a different card, but they can, they don't have the extra cards like you would have if you were you know level fifteen against a level eight a level eight only has four extra cards or wait two four six eight ten ten extra cards where level 14 has all their cards that they can get so it's kind of yeah. you know it's kind of sucks but moving right along mm. are we moving right along yes oh wait <laughs> i didn't know because usually yogi has a lot more to dust off he's just dusting forever he but yeah my, but yeah my yeah yeah, my dust off for this week is that I'm going to be, I am promising myself and everybody listening that I'm going to do a lot more gaming in the coming weeks. Because it's like, I, I'm, I'm like a, I'm, I'm hankering right now. I'm like a crack fiend. 
I need to get my fix. Obi's addicted too. <laughs> I am addicted. Deals for cheap bastards. I'm one. I'm sorry. Yogi's one. He's probably not sorry. But we're both cheap, and we both want to find, we both love to play video games. So if you are a cheap bastard, and you love to play video games... Or play with yourself. Don't miss... <laughs> Don't miss out on the Sega Humble Bundle. Um, I don't have the numbers exactly right here, but uh, it's $6 for how many games, Yogi? 19. 19 games. Now, if you guys remember, is this the Sega, you know, the, the black, big freaking black box is what we're talking about here? Well, it's like, it's like, uh, it's, it? it's spanning it's... several generations. Okay. They got the Sega Genesis games. They got, I think they got some Sega Master System games, and they got... Stuff that's come out on you know since then, you know, like the uh, Total War games, which are more they're no more for like PC. So right. they got a lot of a lot of variety on there, you know, classic Sega and more modern day Sega. So there's there's something for everyone there. Definitely, I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the trigger, even though I have such a freaking. That's part of the issue. That's why I haven't dusted off that much because I look at my at my list and it's not that I, I don't have something good to play. It's that I have so many good things to play. And the problem with me is when I have too many decisions, my, I just give up. I say, I'm not going to make any choice. <laughs> and what I want to say to everybody here, okay. Now, an average player, okay, has, you know, 20, 25 games on his Steam account or, you know, give or take. The, the friends that I have probably have right around that many games where they, you know, different games that they played and bought, cheap, you know, whatever. Now, Yogi's not the average player. I want to say this dude has over 100 games on his Steam account. Have you looked at my list? Oh, man. Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> uh, and he's got so many games. He's got games that he's bought. He hasn't played yet. Because <laughs> he, he, he scrolled down them, and you're like, okay, you got this game, this game, this game, zero hours, zero hours. Zero. You haven't even installed it yet. But he's got it. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't clock my hours. I have to say that. Like Payday 2, I played some Payday 2, but it hasn't clocked any hours on that. Just want to oh, say. Okay, okay. Ooh, calm down, homie. Calm down. Because you know uh, what will happen with Steam? If if you're, if you're Steam service is offline, I don't know if you noticed, but the service has been going offline a lot lately. They've been having some issues with the network. Mm -hmm. If they go offline, you can still access your games, but it won't it won't sync with the server and it won't clock your, your gameplay. And sometimes it'll screw up your saves. It, so it will. Um, what is free on steam or we're going to go with a few little prices. Um, I'm going to go through this just, uh, fairly quickly here. Um, LA Lenore, if you guys have ever heard that it's a, uh, um, kind of a mobster game or I'm say LA, Nori, Nori, N O I R E. I think it's uh, Noir. Noir, whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a French, it's a French thing, you know. French I mean. mobsters, basically. It is only sixty-seven percent <laughs> off. It was twenty dollars. It's only six dollars and fifty-nine cents. Yeah, I said it wrong. Who cares? I see you laughing over there. Counter Strike, I'm not fourteen ninety-nine. And but wait, wait, we wait. Have Obi, a fifty percent off. A uh, couple. Uh, we have uh, Race the Sun, which is, uh, I have never, ever even seen this game before. Oh, um, I, I imagine it's uh, it has ice. I'm actually looking at it right now, sorry. Um, it actually, you have to build uh, build uh, certain things out of, like, ice and, 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 and what would the sun would melt, basically. So you have to race the sun from, from where down here where you have to start, and then you have so much time till it raises to where it'll start melting all your shit. Rust. Nineteen ninety nine. These are all the feature item games, guys. The Rockstar Game Weekend is what it's called, and this is March thirteenth through the seventeenth. So you do have three more days still, and ends on Sunday. Um, the Seven Days to Die, the survival horde crafting game. So if you guys like zombies, you guys like trying to survive, this is something that you guys would probably like. Twenty four ninety nine. Goddess. Yes. I don't need know. Three Genesis of the God game. 1999. I'm not even going to get into it. <laughs> Just me. I don't know. That's a really Banished neat, is that's a really neat game. Uh, Space Hulk. Uh, Yogi talks about this quite often. Uh, and he plays it, I think, quite often when he actually can. Uh, it's only $20, uh, which it was 
almost 30 so uh that's a decent little hawken it is free to play it is if you guys like mechs and getting into a mech warrior stop it yogi you got like getting into a mech warrior and just and just beefing it up with freaking guns and cannons and rockets and all that other shit hawken's the way to go it is free to play go check that out as well war game red dragon i i was wondering was when this was going to come you know to a, a decent price you're worrying me there yo really uh, I'm, I'm engaging on the chat because you're like laughing and you know everything else and then you know and then i can't hear you because i accidentally turned my mic or my speakers down yeah but anyway day z is 29.99 you guys did miss the deal it was 19.99 when i bought it or actually when it got bought for me which was cool it's fine um and uh there's a couple more now this is one of the bigger games that's out right now and i see it in streaming all the time it's one of the sometimes it's the second channel on the whole list of channels uh after league of legends of course south park the stick of truth yeah uh they all go through their little uh quest lines and it basically the stick of truth is basically a wand they're trying to you know do little uh things to help their town from a uh I don't even exactly know a space alien invasion it looks like. I don't even know, man. So I haven't even said it. That is sixty dollars. It is brand new. You guys can check that out as well. Dark Souls 2, $49.99. Plague Incorporated in Evolved, $14.99. Uh can you affect the world? Basically you're a virus and you have to affect affect the world as much as possible. It's pretty uh uh, yeah. Nom, Nom Nom Galaxy. Don't exactly know what that is. Looks like a really <laughs> terrible 2D game. 1999. Towerfall Ascension. I know Yogi's talked about this, I think, before. Or actually, was that uh, Matt that was talking about this? It is 15% off this week. 12 net, 12.74. And last one. Oh, not not last one, but Starbound. Another 2D game that uh, I. Don't know nothing about fourteen ninety nine, and the last one, Planet Explorers, twenty four ninety nine. I imagine you go around planets and exploring. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Some of the new free play, free to play games, uh, is Path of Exile, Sacrifice of the Veil is free to play. The Mighty Quest of Epic Loot. Now I've seen this a couple places streaming. Have you, Yogi, seen this? Yes, I was in the closed beta just as it was about, you know, I finally got to play it and then they sh shut it down on me and then it came out and now it's free to play. So I, I'm, that's another one I'm going to get into for sure. Definitely. Um, and like I said earlier, Hawken with the mechs. Um, and there's a game right here that I actually play. I don't know if Yogi plays it anymore, but it's War Thunder. That is free to play. You're basically 1942. World War II, in effect, you got U.S., Germany, Russia, Great Britain and Japan, so you can be any of those and build up your planes to uh, go uh, down the opposing force in the air. Uh, and now, actually, it's coming out. I think it's in beta right now, uh, where they have the ground division with the tanks now. Uh, so that should be interesting. And what they're trying to do is just basically get a whole concept of a whole world war. You got your air guys, guys that are in the planes. You got your guys that are down there in the tanks. And then even if I'm on a water map, you guys got your guys right there on a you know on destroyers or ships or you know landing boats or whatever a couple more uh, free to play games before we move on uh planet side 2 is free to play marvel heroes is also and warframe is another um free to play game and dogs of war online so if you guys like any of those games or want to try them out just hit them up hit me up on steam um and we'll we'll definitely play some together that was pretty fun yo actually doing all that i'd set it really fast but it was pretty good what was the... did you say dogs of war yeah i did that can't that can't be the game i'm thinking no you're thinking of god of war no no see i hate when games come out with names of other games that came out in the past and they had nothing to do with anything well and i think i probably said like dogs of war and it had an extra title to it um, I'm pretty will. I'm will. I'm pretty willing that. Well, that didn't even sound right. Tell you the truth. Um, but uh, hmm. yeah, we'll look at it right here again. All games. Uh -huh. Oh no, no Yogi, we're gonna look at it again, just because. Yeah. Turn-based strategy game. It looks like a tactics game. 
This isn't like the game that I f- I that of uh, the shares the same namesake, mm-hmm. but it looks pretty cool. Because there used to be this game called Siege, and then there was an expansion called Dogs of War, and it was like the it was like a, a game where you had to uh, protect your castle or attack the castle. Right. It was pretty epic, and it was like one of the first uh, games I remember playing online, like with a dial-up modem, old school, yo. Just one more reminder: the the Steam free to play the games, uh, the Steam free to play weekends. They end on Sunday, right around midday, noon, one o'clock, uh, give or take. Depends on when they want to shut it down, really. Uh, for those that are in the U.S., um, Yogi also street holiday sale. Back a lot going. I got a lot of gaming to do still, and then if I'm gonna get back into Mighty Quest, and then oh, and then what? Some of the ones you just mentioned. It's a lot of stuff to play. Though I'm happy this weekend's free to play game does not appeal to me. Fortune Formula One Racer, I'll pass on that. Yeah. But 19 games from the Sega sale, oof. I can I see you. Yeah. Yogi's going to have those 19 games. So beware, you guys might get a, a Sega game for a, a prize. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you, no suckers. Maybe I'll buy the bundle twice. What's up, Carth? I didn't hire you. Well, actually, actually, I already own a couple, a few of those games. So if they, if Steam, sometimes what they do is they give you the the Steam key separately. So if they do, and I could do that, and it's just I could gift the key. If it's a bundle, someone. they won't, because I bought a bundle and they didn't. It's all one. It's sent to your account. The whole bundle is sent to you, or the whole bundle is sent to a gift. Yeah, they changed it. Can not made it so that it links into your account? Mm-hmm. So you but can... they used to make it so that you could set. They gave you the key, and then you redeem it, and you could, or you could gift it if you want to. Yeah, that sucks. Right. Oh, well, you killed that dream. I imagine if you bought the whole bundle as a gift, you could try to actually do it, and if it doesn't work, then you could actually just use it for yourself. Well, yeah, I, I think you if you already, I think if you if you get a game on you know for Steam and you already have own it, and you try to add it again, mm-hmm. it automatically goes to gift inventory. I believe so. Yeah, because I, I actually I was looking at that one of my buddies, and he goes, uh, "I already have this game." I said, "You're not getting it for yourself. You're getting it for me," because it already it was, it was already grayed out, and it said you can only buy it for a friend. So yeah, that's how it goes. So okay. yeah, I might have I might have a copy of uh, Typing of the Dead Overkill, and I know there's a few other games that I have in there, but yeah, well, that's a fun game. One last thing for the uh, with the deals, the midweek madness on Steam. You usually they have something during you know Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and um, they actually put us some more LDs, some more <laughs> some more deals out through the week for through the week, so they can get through their weekend stuff. So um, a couple of those are Strike Suit Zero and RPG. Oh my bad, that's that's from last week. My bad. Got to remove that. Okay, disregard everything I just said, because... Well, there is Yogi, Banner Saga. Yogi's messed up. Again. No, ba- Banner Yogi. Saga Banner Saga is, is Midweek Madness. Okay, Banner Saga is Midweek Madness. Welcome. Yeah, yes. Just threw me off again. My bad. <laughs> I forgot to remove that from the notes. That was last week's, uh, but yeah. the Banner, Banner Saga is Midweek Madness, and uh, that one's worth a look if you like the tactics game. I see a lot, I'm seeing a lot of tactics game come out. I might check that one out, too. But anyway, carry on. Carry on. I'm done. It's your You're turn. Done. My my turn. Well, are we are we wrapping things up? Oh man, it is. We it, we're, it's almost one thirty. So, hey, like I said, we are gonna get back to. Uh, I really want to. I'm just waiting for the yes or okay, because um, I really don't run things around here. He does. So I gotta ask every now and then. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say, uh, you know, two, two more recommendations. And again, we always say it every week. Usually, Armada Online, check it out. Free alpha build, Armada hyphen online. You can Google it. dot com. You know, Armada, I, uh, Armada hyphen online dot com. Vote, vote yes for the Steam green light. Um, and definitely support that. And check out Soul Forge. It's a good alternative to Magic the Gathering and Hearthstone, and it's got really unique uh, game mechanics. And what's cool about it is that 
uh, the creator of uh, Magic the Gathering, Richard Garfield, has been like an advisor on this project. So it's got it's 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 got a nice professional feel to it. Really good balancing, really good vision driving it. Uh, so Soul Forge and, and Armada Online, check them out. And if you play, tweet us, you know, so we could just do a little random gaming thing, maybe stream it, you know, jam on it. But I've been plugging the crap out of Soul Forge, especially today. I feel guilty for not playing it as much as I used to. I mean, it used to be the game I used to stream all the time. Definitely. Okay. Go ahead, Obi. <laughs> so what we like to do at the end of the show, we do like to make sure that we uh, we cross-promote a little bit of uh, some of our friends um, at different channels that just that just show us love as well. Um, and we just, you know, this is... Uh, when we do this show like this, we're 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 not just it's not just horseplay. We're of course it is just horseplay with uh, Obi and, and Yogi here, but it's I mean it's also you know all the all the cast member or all the hosts of you know B Team uh, podcast. We have Knuckleball Radio, and I'm gonna go through the list here in a second. But we just want to make sure that we we give shout outs and we give you know just the mutual support that they show us. So we do want to let you guys know that horseplay is on Stitcher iTunes radio or tune in radio, sorry. Blackberry. <laughs> that was a mistake. Dude, I cleaned it this time. All right. Horace Play is on Stitcher, tune in radio, Blackberry, and iTunes. Yes, I did say iTunes. We are now on iTunes. Check us out. Leave us some reviews. Leave us some reviews and some uh, favorites. I subscribe on the talk show. Talk shoe and Stitcher. Uh, you guys can let us know what you guys are thinking. And iTunes. <laughs> You're killing me, man. I'm gonna, one, more... day I'm gonna, I, I, one day I'm going to just start typing random stuff while you're yeah, reading it off. I'm going to shoot you through the screen. But like, too. my dog ate my balls. My with list... some barbecue sauce. Let's see if I say it. Yeah. More listeners mean more uh, that we can run bigger promotions. I eat giveaways, community play dates, and along with other uh, really cool things that we're uh, trying to accomplish with uh, what we're doing here. So, also give us tons of thumbs up on Stitcher so we can show up more in search results as people are just searching. You know, they search horseplay. I think there's only one that comes up right now. Yeah, but they might search by they might search by category, exactly or topic. So. so. But any questions or comments that you guys do have that you've kind of thought about through the show, you guys can leave us a voicemail. Please leave us voicemails because we will play them on the show. The number is right above my head right here. If you guys are not watching live and listening on the podcast, that number is 206-415-4987. You guys call us up, leave us a voicemail, and uh, we're definitely going to play them live. Because uh, if he's going to play me talking like a little girl, I'm definitely going to play something else. Or something about they left it in the pool. I don't. We still don't know what he put in the pool. <laughs> all, the music, all the music on here is provided by Technoax on YouTube. That is Techno with a K, Axe, A-X-E. And um, he's just got really good music. You guys can monetize and do anything that you want, even make money with that music, and he does not care. Highlighted videos and audio casts, especially the Horseplay Uncut version, is available on Obi-Wan-X2 right here uh, on Twitch and as well on Yogi Zilla channel and both on YouTube and Twitch. Mine's not on YouTube yet. I'm still having some issues with that. But make sure you guys check that out if you guys do want to see the full uncut version, even the, the, the live uh, video. Uh, you guys can check that out on those channels. We do also want you guys to check out some of our friends at Gaming History 101, Sega Nerds, The Gaming of the Shrew, R9 Casts, Knuckleballer Radio, Zombie Cast, and B Team Productions, all on allgames.com network and or Stitcher. You guys can check all those guys out too. They're a great group of guys. And nine times out of ten, we got at least one of those guys from those different podcasts on Horseplay. So you guys can, you know, get with them. And of course... Mr. Matto McFly. Sorry, I couldn't add. I was going to say Motto again, but I couldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there are also tons of great blogs that we are plugging. Uh, and, and just because we 
you know, love to do it, that we're actually reblogging right there on Gang, our network blog at geekyantics.wordpress.com. So check that out as well, uh, including ZombieCast. Uh, this is something that we're actually very, very happy about. Uh, um, the zombie blog and Castorius. How do you say that? Castorius. Yes, we'll say it. I, I can't. Casterbris. There, Casterbris. I couldn't hear you for a second. So, we've seen huge response uh, from the zombie and the gaming clan uh, related content. So, expect more to that. It will be coming back because I'm sorry. The last two episodes where we were talking about zombies and whatnot, I had the most fun I've ever had in my life on this show. Uh, well, tonight was pretty cool because our chat was freaking trolling at the hell out of us just, uh, in the early <laughs> in the early going. But we do want to make sure that you guys uh, check us out. And uh, upcoming, who do we got coming up here in the future there, Yogi? Possible guests? Yeah, we're cooking up some stuff. We're cooking up some stuff. There'll be a lot of fellow podcasters, but we're going to try to get... Uh, I've been talking. I've been in talks with some people and in, in more involved in the gaming industry uh, on different levels, uh, whether it's you know not just media, but also people that do development, uh, design, uh, localization, you know, community management, stuff like that. So we're not going to give you know, any from, hints. Not any hints. No people hints. from actual gaming companies, you know, and publishers. So that's that's something in the future. Not the near future, you know, because they have busy schedules. But we're gonna work. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna build that up. Carson, hey, yeah. Carson yeah, goes. Carth. I missed this week for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's all right, Carth. Better late than than ever, dude. We, go check us love out. Love making it. You know what? Karth should leave us a voicemail he as should. To, as an an atonement. Look at that. Even not Panda came in here last late. Minute. I know we're almost ready to end. They're like, "Hey guys, we're here." It started two hour, two and a half hours ago. <laughs> yeah, we give you ample time to catch up with us. But yes, hey, you guys that didn't catch the show, be, make sure that you guys go hit us up. I do it all the time. I did it last week when I was just hearing. And, you know, see how the show went uh, when I was doing my little workout. I just put my headphones on, turn my phone on. Um, if you guys got Android, go to the Play Store, get Stitcher, and you can listen right to it on your phone. That sounds great. Um, and I, I heard everything that I wanted to hear. So little things that we're both working on to get better so we can get you guys good shows. Yes, and hopefully next week we'll be actually taking in more call-ins, like just random call-ins and uh, get everybody more involved. As if we don't have a guest. If we have a guest, it's gonna be hard to get call, take uh, live call ins, random call ins. But uh, you you know, either way, you get Twitter, you got voicemail, you know, email, lots of different ways to connect with us. Right. Well, and remember, guys, like you said, call ins. We do have a Skype that we're actually going to. It's a horseplay Skype that we're actually going to invite uh, some people, even if you're just uh, a person somebody that watches us uh, live here on the show. Or even somebody that just listens that can get in, that can get on Skype. We'd really love to have you guys. With that being said, Leogi, is there anything else that you would love to uh, send some parting words to our lovely listeners? Yeah, just again, again like we're uh, really stoked about all the support we've gotten, all the love we're getting, especially from the all games community. I know a lot of people are rallying to get us on there as an official show. You know, but regardless of what networks we're on, you know, we're, we're always willing to collaborate with people from other networks, from other shows, other sites, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, there's always a, a way we can work together, put a spin on what you do. I mean, I, I, I talked to a buddy of mine, uh, and we work on projects together, and, and he's a musician, and he's interested in doing some podcasting, and I'm like, hey, you know, you can come on the show and, and, and you know, go, you know, goof off with us, so... Everybody's welcome to just, you know Definitely. just for some horseplay, goof around with us. Definitely, Can't as long wait. as you're as long as you're a geek, gotta be a geek. It's not a requirement. <laughs> with that being said, guys, this is Obi One X Two, and we're out along with Yogi Zilla. Remember, you guys can hit us up uh, throughout the week uh, on uh, at Obi One X Two on Twitter and at Yogi Zilla on Twitter as well. Make sure you guys check out the shows. If you guys missed anything else, it's up on Stitcher iTunes, Talk Shoe, Tune In Radio, Talk Shoe of, of, of a couple of blogs. But we will see you guys next week. Horseplay out. See you guys. Peace.
To all the viewers and listeners right here, thank you for watching Horseplay. We will see you next week. Peace!